afternoon. I'd like to call the Board of County Commissioners Transportation Meeting for Tuesday, June 28th, 2022 to order. I want to welcome everybody here this afternoon. We'll begin our meeting with the invocation given by Commissioner Harvey and the pledge given by Commissioner Turner. Please stand if you're able. Let us bow our heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, a day we've never experienced before in our life. Father, we thank you that everyone's here today with something on their heart to share with their, their elected officials. Give us ears to hear and give us wisdom to speak, Father, today. We ask, Lord, that everything be done decently and in order today. And Father, we thank you that we have the ability to serve our fellow man in the capacity that you've given us. Father, we thank you for Putnam County, our state and our country, our state and our country. And we thank you that 4th of July lets freedom ring, Father. And we thank you so much that we can still live in a free country and express to one other, to each other our concerns and our doubts. And, our, and Lord, we can build up and we can, we can just exalt your name in public as we all do. And Father, we thank you for everything that's good and everything that comes from your throne room directly to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Harvey, and thank you, Commissioner Turner. Uh, commissioners, we'll move down to the public hearing for Public Works Department. The MSBU assessment rate change. I assume that that's why most people are here um, for that. So I'll start by uh, turning this over to Mike Nimitz. Uh, give us a brief overview, and then we'll have commissioner comments, and then open it up for public comment. Good afternoon, commissioners. This public hearing is to approve the final assessment resolution for consideration of increasing and or decreasing an already imposed non ad valorem assessment for the following MSBUs. Interlocking Estates 2 North MSBU from $27.57 increased to $35.79. Interlocking Estates South MSBU from $24.93 increased to $31.68. Interlocking Estates Boulevard MSBU from $30 decreased to $29.20. Interlocking Estates 19 MSBU $51.70 decreased to $48.86. Lakeside Oaks MSBU from $46.62 increased to $70.94. Moore's Trail MSBU $187.40 decreased to $81.04. Ocklawalla Hills MSBU $60.22 increased to $64.38. St. John's Harbor Unit 3 MSBU $34.96 increased to $238.12. St. John's Riverside Estates MSBU increased from $78.03 to $302.88. West Putnam MSBU increased from $25 to $42.01. The Public Works Department recommends the board approve all of the assessment rate changes and authorize the chairman's signature on all of the corresponding final assessment resolutions to ensure continuing services to all dirt maintenance MSBUs listed. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Commissioner, any comments? Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, you for everyone attending today. This resolution is, is really not about the rate increase as much as, because we're going to get to that, it's about the process of where we go from here. Back, I want to say over 20 some odd years ago, Kevin Dersher, Commissioner Dersher, started the MSBU processes because as I was a landowner president out in Larkin Lake Estates, we were getting very minimal service from the county. And we decided to try to put a fee on ourselves in order to get our roads taken care of. Some areas got roads taken care of every month. Some areas didn't get roads taken care of at all. And we were faced with that. So when we got here and we started looking at this, that's when we noticed that there were some discrepancies there. 
these MSBUs are run by a citizens committee. And I want to say that one more time, because I really want you to hear me. These are run by the citizens committee. And some of you might serve on that committee. If you do, would you raise your hand? Okay, thank you, thank you. And some of you have been invited to serve on that committee. And I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, um, only because I don't want to embarrass you. There's room, this is probably one of the best scenarios that government is closest to the people. Because the committee, when you have a road complaint, that comes into us at the county, or Nilda, who is the MSBU coordinator, and she contacts the committee, correct? And then the committee, the committee goes out there and looks at the problem, inspects it, and tries to do a fix on it. And they meet on a monthly basis, most of them for West Putnam, I can't speak for the other ones around the county. West Putnam meets at the community center and they all meet the same night. There's different rooms in there and they all meet. So the MSBU process has never been changed. Now, again, some of you probably see a big increase in some areas and we're gonna talk about that. But today is really for a resolution so that we can have a minimum standard of doing business with the costs associated. Because again, these rates never changed all this time. And you notice some of them decreased. I'm sorry, you can't hear me. Some of them decreased and some of them uh, had a slight increase and some had a major increase. And I wanna address that real quick too. Um, for years and years and years, we had two contractors that did all the MSBU roads. Well, times have changed, and especially the, the outlining areas, Boswick area and also in Satsuma, they just didn't want to drive down there anymore. The cost of doing business was very expensive. So, and plus they, they had a change in their operation. So in some cases, they, they started another business. So they didn't bid on them. We had outside companies that bid. Those of you that are in ILE South, you had a, a change of contractor who came in, correct me if I'm wrong, and he started the process and he didn't like the process. He didn't want nothing to do with it. His eyes were bigger than his stomach and he left. So then we had to put it out for bid. So we've had a few hiccups, but nothing that we can't get over. Um, and that's what we're working towards now is trying to get this to a minimum standard with a cost associated. And one good thing about an MSBU dirt road compared to a county dirt road is you get mowing on your road, okay? If it's a count, I, well, I, I, I see it, but we're, we're gonna have that conversation about the minimum standard, remember that. But you're supposed to get mowing, okay? And there's gonna be that standard put into play on that. You're supposed to get grading, you're supposed to get material if you need it, and there's a reserve for emergencies built into that. So that's why you're seeing this reconstruction. But again, the resolution is only for us to go ahead, and we tried to do this for a couple years now, and we've missed some deadlines because we had to send out letters to everyone affected by it, which was like 30,000 letters, first class mail to everyone, letting you know that there was this public hearing today. So. Now we can start making those adjustments and corrections as we go. We can start looking at the cost of doing business. We can see what the, the, cons the consumer, you, the customer, wants. You might go, well, I don't need it every month. We might only need it six times a year. We might need it eight times a year. That's a decision that'll come from that citizens committee back to the board and ask us if there's something we can do there. So today is not all about us forcing something on you. It has nothing to do with that. It's to have a conversation about where we go in the future because where we're at now is not sustainable. We have some roads out in West Putnam and 9,500 lots out there. I think it's 95 miles of dirt road that they haven't seen a grader on ever. They haven't seen a mower on. They haven't seen any type of drainage work done. That's, but people are paying a fee. And that ain't right, is it? So that's what we're here to talk about today. We're gonna to talk about our resolution because by law we have to get this done. And then we're going, by Florida statutes, we have to do this. And then we're gonna move forward on what kind of relief because some people in this room are gonna get, get 
hit pretty hard because contractors don't want to do the work and there might be some alternatives that we can do. So kind of, if you will, let this process go forward a little bit and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to speak. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Harvey. Commissioners, any other comments? Not for right now. Okay, all right, so okay, I'm gonna open it up for public comment. Okay, um, this portion of public comment designed for citizens to have um, allow a time to give their concerns. I assume everybody is speaking on the MSBUs. If you please, um, when you come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Uh, please keep your comments to three minutes and please direct your comments to the board. So we'll start just as they are in order. Derek Fredetit. Yes, if you step up and pull the mic to you and state your name and address and My name the record. is Derek Fredette, F-R-E-D-E-T-T-E. -E. Uh, the address, I live in St. Pete, P.O. Box 22501, and the zip is 33742. Um, I have a piece of property at, on Van Street uh, out in uh, Commissioner Adam Zach's uh, District 5. I just bought it last year. I'm here to address the condition of the overall area and specifically on Van Street. Um, it appears as if there hasn't been very much roadway maintenance going on. I've been writing the, uh, the county about it. I did receive this letter just recently. Um, <clears throat> my main concern was illegal dumping, roadway maintenance, and even roadway access. On Van Street last year, there was so much trash, there was a boat hole on one side of the, there were two boats dumped on that street. Uh, on the north end and on the south end, there was a tree that somebody had put in the way to, I guess, block it. I don't know. I couldn't even go look at the property last year. This year, uh, some work has been done. So I'm glad that's been done. There's logs out there. There's been some cleanup. So I'm really happy. And I applaud the council if y'all had something to do with it that, you know, that progress appears to have been made. I think that we need more progress out there. I misunderstood the meaning of this letter. I thought the uh, this proposed ad valorem tax would increase my property tax, and I don't have an objection to that. I don't think it's enough. If I have to pay more money for that, that's fine with me. I just would like to be able to have regular, consistent, cleared access uh, to the streets back there, and the sheriff go out there and do something to police the, the illegal dumping out there. I think it's, it's just an abomination. Nobody, nobody should have to live in the condition it was. Now, there has been some cleanup, it appears, but I'd like some, I just want to express my hope that, can, that something will change in the future. You know, I'd really like to, overall, the, the condition of the roads are, are decent. Should they be graded once or twice a year, that's fine. The roadway maintenance, some, there's clay trail. It's almost impassable in this section. Um, Van Street needs some more work done to it, but overall the condition is better than it was, so I'm glad for that and thank you for that. Uh, could there be more work done? Yes. The actual roadway, the right-of-way itself, there are, I still think it's some, some more work needs to be done, specifically on Van Street where my property is, but overall I think, I think you know, it could be better. So that's all I wanted to come up here and say today is uh, I would like to see it improve. So, you know, thank you for your time. Commissioner Adams, you got a comment? I guess it's more not, not necessarily for you specifically, but Mike, can you just go over, just because there's so many people here, what the basis of these numbers is, what the expected work, I think it was one grading a month, just what, what, the, what it was priced based on. Just because I think some people in the room will realize that this is priced for higher services than what they've seen in the past. Yes, sir. The, the standard was for 12 months of grading, four mowing cycles, 100 cubic yards of lime rock, and a 15% reserve. Uh, these were the same previous level of services uh, with the exception of mowing. Uh, get, you used to get about two cycles of mowing, so we've doubled that, that uh, frequency and the 15% reserve. And then can we just let the people know what the process would be if they felt their road wasn't graded in the month that it was supposed to be, who they contact and that, that type of thing? Again, if you have a committee, you would reach out to your committee members. Um, if you do not have a committee, you could reach out to uh, the MSB coordinator, Nibbler Seibert. Thank you. And obviously, you could reach out to any of your commissioners as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Adams. Um, Isabel Rea.
Pam? Hi. Um, Please speak. Hi, yeah. my name is Isabel Weyer, and I'm close by Lake Ida, and my concern was already addressed by the first resident, but I just wanted to mention the people that dump the appliances, the old boats, and they are so bold. They do it right in front of us. I took a picture of this one pickup truck. He tried to hit me and cussed me out because they're sure nobody finds them. They don't get arrested, nothing. So I don't know how you're going to mow if there's um, junk all over, and we would help you. And the lady from Keep Putnam County Beautiful, she told me you get a grant of $1,000 at the beginning of the year for a giant truck where we can pick up all that stuff. But because of COVID-19, that's always an excuse that uh, it wasn't done this year. So I'm asking you to please. I mean, it's, I don't mind if there's a mattress here or there, but it's getting out of hand. And like I said, they don't, they are so bold. They said nothing is going to happen to me. So that's what I was. Okay. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? The address is uh, Robert Street by uh, Lake Estates. Okay. All right. Commissioner Harvey, you had a comment? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And um, the dirt road is good. It's in perfect condition because there's nobody living there. So. I have picked up trash. Some of y'all heard my stories my whole life out there. Yeah. And even last year, not far from your house, took my trailer, loaded it up on a legal dump site. There's a camper not far from your house on the road down there that needs to be moved and picked up. It, trash attracts trash, and the faster we can get it up. But we didn't have prisoners for a few years because of COVID, so we couldn't oh, get out the there. So keep putting them beautiful. Um, yes. And we all do it. We all pick up. We trash. all help. We could all... You know, the minute we do it, we report it, some of that stuff goes away. Not all of it, but the faster we get it up, trash attracts trash. Yes, because there's a tiny little pond in the back that the deer used to drink, you know, and it's beautiful. Right. It is a dumping ground. They put it all in the water, contaminating it. I so. my truck into the water to pick up beer bottles yeah. and trash. Before. Yes, ma'am. And they do mow. Even though there's nobody living, I don't know how, because they just go around, you know, in swirls. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't want to make this comment. I hope it doesn't come out wrong. I, I know there is, I think throughout the county, we have the illegal dumping. There's no question. But I, I believe contacting your commissioner to help take care of that through sanitation uh, is probably where to go with that. So, um, mm -hmm. okay. The next speaker is Gary Cooper or, or Copper. 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 <coughs> Good afternoon, gentlemen. <coughs> My address is uh, 151 Benita Drive. I'm up on the north end in Bostwick and I have got several concerns. I am on the I'm on the board for the SMU there. And one question I have is we recently were thinking about getting the road paved out there. Uh, notices were sent out. Uh, people got to choose whether or not they wanted to. But my concern is if that letter had included the fact that we were going to be hit with a, a very a quadruple charge on our bill, it might have gone the other way if it had been voted down because we're going to pay about the same thing to have the road paved as we are to have it maintained. You know, I feel like this is something that should have been addressed in that letter, and it wasn't. And um, also, I uh, have a question about, am I going to be charged by the lot or by the parcel? Because I have three lots, but it's one parcel. So which way am I going to be charged? Which, which MSB are you? Are you? Must be you. Which MSB? Uh, St. John's, John's, John's Harbor. That's, yeah, it's charged by the platted lot. It's by the lot? Yes. Uh -huh. But there is, there is a process to where you can uh, consolidate. Well, I you know, I I, when I bought, I bought this property, a, you know, a couple of years ago. When we, when we met the other day, Nelson said it was by the lot. Yeah, but how many parcels do you pay? How uh, many assessor do you pay now? One. It's not going to change. Okay. I hope not, because if, if it does change, then I'm going to be hit with a great You're big fee. You're only paying one now. We're not changing your parcel. Okay. All right. If I may, when we pulled into the meeting that um, one of the examples given was somebody has seven lots. Uh, 
All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Right. So at, at, the, at the meeting, um, uh, it was last week, right? Yeah. Um, the question was asked whether or not people that had multiple lots that were identified as under one parcel um, would be charged for more than one share, and the answer was yes. The example given was when the lady said, my son has seven lots, three cannot even be accessed from the road, um, yet he he's, has to pay seven, seven shares of this. Say what? I'm, I'm, I'm hard of hearing, so and I don't have my hearing aids today. They're broken, but uh, did somebody say something? There was a phone going off. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, anyways, um, we, we do need to get clarity on that. And, and, and Gary's right. Um, this group came before the commission. The letter that was sent out was supposed to give them the option and have the cost to pay versus MSBU maintenance. Um, then they can make the decision whether it was worth them to pay the extra money to go to full pavement or pay the extra money and just stay on maintenance. Um, but they've never gotten that answer, and, and they're a very frustrated group of folks. Now, basically, I mean, if, if we're going to be, if, if, if my fee is going to quadruple, you know, then I feel like we should be getting... They can't hear you. If my fee is going to quadruple, then we need to get something better than what we have now. You know, we have somebody that comes out and scrapes an existing Lime Rock Road a couple times a year, and all they do is just dig it a little bit deeper. You know, we're not getting anything added to it. We're not doing anything more than just moving it from one area to another. Yeah, we get rid of some ruts. And also, I have got a, I got a problem with graders driving off the road into my ditch. You know, I consistently have a wet ditch because the county drainage ditch that runs into the canal is not maintained. So we always have water in our ditches. And uh, this last guy that graded drove into the ditch. When my wife confronted him about the mess he left, he said, oh, um, I'll report it to the county. Well, of course, nothing ever happened about it. And I've got a, a ditch that's like it's got a big mohawk going down the middle of it. You know, um, there needs to be some accountability. You know, um, if we're going to pay for something, then I feel like we need to get something. You know, if we're going to stay with what we got as far as a Lime Rock Road, then we need to have some material put on it. You know, I'm, a, I'm an old general contractor. I know how things work, and I know what things cost. And, you know, um, I love it out here in Putnam County. Wouldn't want to live anywhere else. But like I said, I feel like we need to have some improvement over what we have right now. Okay. Commissioner Harvey. Sir, um, I didn't catch your last name. I'm sorry. My last name is Coppen, C-O-P-P-E-N. Okay. You're on the MSBU committee? Yes, I am. Drainage is part of the MSBU process. Well, it's never been addressed because we have a, we have a ditch out there that, that would has be never the committee, been maintained. But that would be the committee's responsibility. That's why we had these committees. Just like some areas that it, you take West Putnam, they couldn't afford to put lime rock on those roads out there. So now all they got is clay and sugar sand in most areas. They can't afford to do that. So, but the committee, and if I'm, I mean, it's, it, drainage is part of the responsibility of the MSBU. So what you're saying is that should have been done through the MSBU fee that was charged. Well, from what we were told, we weren't, there was not enough money to get it graded, much less get anything else done. You know, we that's, could, a, that's where we're at today. Well, I, like I, I said, I you know, um, yeah. I have no problem paying more than what I'm paying now. I know what things cost. Like I said, I'm an I'm, I'm a old time general contractor, you know, so yes, I, I know what we need, what things need to be done. But like I said, if you're going to jack up our rate, then give us something in return. I agree. You know, don't just say, okay, we're going to raise it up and we're going to come out there twice or three times a year and grade your road. If we got all this stuff that's available to us as a committee, then by all means, you know, we need to get the drainage taken care of. We need to get the, if you're going to cut our grass out there, then come cut it. You know, don't just tell us about it. Let's get it done. You know, but that's so, you. But uh, that's you. That's the committee's Well, response. like I said, I, will, I, I feel quite sure if, if this is what's going to happen, that the committee will do something about it. Okay. So, but at any rate, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Commissioner Rawls. I think there, there, there's more questions that this group has based on the means that I've attended than answers. And that's part of what's driving the frustration of the folks out there um, going 
back to the first meeting that Matt and I went to, um, they were discussing paving then. They were looking for numbers, but the numbers were, were just ridiculously high, and then the numbers came back um, different, and there was a, a question whether or not you had to have 50% plus one, or if a, if a no return envelope counted as a yes vote and all this. This is the group that we're talking about here. Um, they've been fighting this fight for several years. Their ditches are in bad shape. I went out there um, this afternoon, or, uh, earlier before I got here, I went out there and looked, and I don't, I don't know how you get to the point that the ditches get fixed where they can be afforded to be maintained, because right now they're not maintainable, if you know what I mean. Do you, you follow what I'm saying, Mike? Um, there are a lot of organics that need to be dealt with. So whose responsibility is it, and this was a question that was raised the other day, to get things fixed to where they're serviceable from this point forward? Is it gonna come out of the MSB money right off the top? Um, you know, and then what is that cost going to look like? Because if you say we're going to grade it a dozen times a year, mow it four times a year, but you've got ditches that don't flow, you're going to wipe the roads right back out. Again, I think that would be something that we would have to work with the MSBU committee to see what is attainable with the funding they have. And if it's not attainable, then we'd have to resort to possibly coming to the commission to see what the commission can do. And this, this is, and, and the other concern they expressed was, um, and I've, I've already told them, I don't think it's our responsibility, but there's an, there's an outfall canal. There's an outfall ditch that goes into a canal. And apparently, the, um, you're getting sediment from the ditches into that canal. Now the canal doesn't drain, and that's creating problems. And since I've been elected, I've been told we don't touch canals. But I've also been told that there's pictures of us in that canal with a spider cleaning it out once upon a time. So that, that's, another, that's another area that needs to be addressed. And um, you know they're 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 trying to figure out what do they get for the three hundred dollars per parcel or per per whatever it is going to be, um, and what happens if you do all this and you still don't have drainage? Again, the assessment is based off of the uh, packages that were bid. Again, the 12, 12 <clears throat> months of monthly grading, the four cycles of mowing. But in this in, in this case, it doesn't. His microphone. Okay. Microphone. Can y'all in in the in the booth out there? Can you turn the mics up? What their concern is is so they they don't know that they can get to where they want, they need to be starting with this number and with the condition of the roads and ditches that they're in, in now. This this may be a non-starter is my point. Again, we have priced out you know the services that I referenced before. Um, we would have to look at that and, and see what they can and cannot get by with and what they want to prioritize. But the, it doesn't answer the question. The question is, if the ditches have to be reshaped and profiled, where does that money come from? Is that an additional amount for them, or do we have to um, pay for that out of, out of general fund? Or is there I would first see if, if the <clears throat> funds that they have in the MSBU are adequate, and if they're not, then we could possibly approach the board about it and, and if they, we would give consideration to it. But first, we'd have to see if their funds are able to achieve that. But are there funds <clears throat> right now, if... if if they get 12, 12 gradings a year and four mowings a year and a, 100 yards of material, that eats up all their funds, correct? That's correct, the way it is bid. Uh, I but think, I think it goes without that saying service, that they need more than this. Again, yeah, they may potentially, but if they don't use all of that service, then there may be some contingency funding that they can use to address these other issues. So the smorgasbord. He, he but it's really up to the MSBU committee. They are really the ones who kind of drive uh, the level of service. Okay. All right, Commissioner Adams, I I guess I'll just give an example of where that has happened. There's one of the MSBUs in my district. They didn't do grading for a few months because they didn't need it because it just was holding up. And they decided to use that money to do the ditches and to put a culvert in in the one location instead. Um, and they decided to get some material for that location as well. And then, so, and that, correct me if I'm wrong because this is the way I understand it from the, the three or four MSBU meetings I went to with the citizens. Um, if you guys don't, if the committee says don't grade this month, that money doesn't go away. It's in, it's in a kitty for your group for until you use it. So if you decide you don't want to mow all year, that mowing money stays in the, in the committee. If you decide you only want to grade five times in the year, that other seven times would basically stay in the money and you could utilize that for your ditches or for more material or to fix a culvert next to the certain road or or however you want to use it. So they, they do have flexibility there. I, I've seen it work in other MSPUs. There's no, there's no repercussion with the contractors 
No. No, it's a, as yeah. per, per cut and per, yep. so if, if they as say we're basis. That's two my cuts a year. This is not a contract where they just go out there and grade it every month, you know, uh, at their own discretion. No, they, they are actioned on these items. They are okay. directed to proceed. Okay. All right. Um, Pat Rogers. You guys got that right. Pat Rogers. Pat Rogers. If everybody could look at their phones and electronic devices, you can turn them on mute or off, please. Pat I'd Rogers, 4838 Sunset Boulevard. My parents bought this property in 1985. They'll never, re we'll never recoup the money that we paid in taxes if we sell it. <laughs> but I tried to drive out there this morning, and I couldn't get to it. A lot of the street signs are gone, and. I can't hear you. Okay. Yeah. If you give just a minute, can we ask IT? Can they do anything at all about the volumes <laughs> of the microphones, please? Sorry, I was going to say. I have my hearing aids and can't hear, so I feel bad for you. <laughs> no. I tried to drive out there this morning, and I know I got close to it, but I never got to it because the street signs are missing, and you know the dirt roads and. After a while, I just turned myself around and got out. But talking about the lime rock on the roads, all I saw was graded sand. I could tell the roads had been graded, but I didn't see any lime rock. And uh, you know, and I also saw piles of garbage. You know, people dumping mattresses and junk. And, but uh, well, it's on Lake Car Charles at Joanne and Christie which is in the back of ways in unit 22. <coughs> Did you get that? <laughs> what? what MSBU is it in? I don't know. This is the first time I've known anything about this. It's in unit 22. I'm on the north side of 20. So if okay, that on helps. On the top any. of your letter, what does it say? It's going to give you a, a MSBU on the top of your letter. I'm Looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see anything that says MS. If everybody on could it. keep their conversations, if you need to have a conversation, please go out in the foyer. That's okay. I, I can help you with that. Okay, that's you. She lives in ILE South. Okay. okay, that gentleman right there with his hand up is the committee president. Okay, let him know your problem right now. Okay, he'll write it down for you. Okay, <laughs> right there. Thank you. Excuse me, Willard and Sally Holmes. do better, I promise. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My question is very similar Can to you state the, your name and address for the record, please, okay, sir? Okay, my name is Willard Holmes, and this is my wife, Sally Holmes. And my question is relating, my question is relating similar to the lady that was just up here. And that has to do with grading and signage. It's been a while out in Lake Lucy since we, my wife and I tried to get out there, but we've always had an issue with the street signs. You can never catch the street signs if they're ever put up. So I would like to bring that to the board for a question of whether or not, as part of this new increase, whether or not we're going to be able to maintain the street signage. Yeah, we usually get lost because from, we're from Orlando, so, um, you know, it's just, it's just hard when all the roads start to look the same. Yes, and there's no sign that should kind of point you in the right direction. So that would be a big help. Okay. So. Okay. Commissioner Harvey, you got a comment on that? Yes, I do. Let me, let me quickly say 
The MSBU doesn't replace street signs, okay? The fee you pay doesn't, but the county will. So if you let us know what street signs you're having problems with, we can go out there and take care of that. And believe me, that's the biggest, that's 95 miles of dirt roads out there. And it goes from 315, I know you're from Orlando, but all the way to Baden-Powell. It's the biggest one that we have, so. Yeah, we're out in Lake Lucy. Yeah. And all the roads look alike when you get out there, Absolutely. so. But just let us know, and I'll give you my card, okay? I appreciate that, I appreciate okay. that. All right, go for it. All right. Thank there. you. Okay, thank you. Email me, okay? Yes. We'll take care of it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, William Kidd. William Kidd. Come on up. <laughs> yeah. Take your number out. <laughs> I would, I would prefer that afterwards if you get a card, one of these comment cards, and okay. fill it out. And just give it to Ashley over here. Okay. All right. Thank Please you. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Estella Callahan. I live at 201 Hudson Trail. It's on the corner of Twin Lakes and Hudson Trail, one block from Union Avenue. Um, I have a couple of concerns. Um, as far as the legal dumping out there, um, there's so much of it that uh, someone had dumped a mattress and someone had spray painted a message. Something like, who in their right mind would do this with a bunch of question marks on it? And I, the dumping out there is just ridiculous. And my friend and I have offered to go out there and clean it up. We called the lady at Keep Putnam Beautiful and uh, we were we told her, look, we don't want any money for it. All we want to do is if you will tell the dump not to charge us to, to dump the materials. And that couldn't be done. Ma'am, yeah, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A lot of you got a note from me recently. We had a great West Putnam cleanup, and I sent out 1,500 postcards in your area asking for people to come out. Had one person. Two people. Okay, so we'll be glad to do a West Putnam cleanup, and okay. we can get that taken care of. Okay. And believe me, I went to a site not far from your house out there where I pulled up and thought a man was standing, sitting in a chair, but they had dressed up the garbage to look like a man. Remember yes. that? Yes. Yeah. And it was kind of funny. I took a picture of it, but it was bad because the guy looked like he got caught on fire. Yes. I mean, it was bad. <laughs> Scared me to death. Yes. So... But I've, I've run squatters off of their property with travel trailers. Yeah. yeah. We can do another cleanup out there, and we'll be glad to. I just don't like doing them in the summertime. We just did it oh, a month ago. But I I'll do it any time you want. Okay. I don't mind. I, I, that, we'll that's great. Um, also, the um, sheriff's department has an inmate yeah. crew. Uh, my husband is actually a sergeant in the jail. Um, and apparently, they're not allowed to go out there and help clean up either. I don't know why, but there's an issue there somewhere. So, um, but I feel like if, you know, if you call the sheriff's department and say, hey, there's a pile of trash over here, maybe y'all could get your inmate crew to come clean it up, you know, I don't know. I don't see where they should have that much to do where they're busy all the time, you know. So, um, my other concern is William Kidd, the gentleman who, was supposed to speak. Um, he owns a tree and lawn business and he grades our roads, the main roads, um, at least once a week. Um, and I, I don't know, I think y'all said we're going to get twice as much grading as we're getting now. Is that correct? The, the, yes, we're trying to go with the standard of 12 times each month, one grade. 12 times a year. 12 yeah. times a year. Okay. That's the, okay. That, that, that's the pricing. If but, the, but it also doesn't count if your neighbor goes out and does it with his own tractor. Right. I understand that. <laughs> Which he should not do that. Yeah. Not supposed to. Uncount. Not supposed to do that. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. It could cause an accident. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Joanna McDowell. Hi. Normally you could hear me talk, but I have a head cold today. I don't have COVID, so I'm a little, a little behind. But we live out there in Interlock and Lake Estates. 
We please bought state, a property about 16 your, months ago. Your name, please. Joanna McDowell and 226 Interlochen Boulevard. We own three lots. Now, we have several things about our lots. Well, mainly about the road. Uh, first of all, there's no streets, uh, no speed limit signs, so people are driving crazy down that road. And it's mostly the tenants who don't own it. And they're driving so fast, they're tearing it up so bad that you actually have to go a certain speed to not get no damage on your vehicles. I've had six flats, and I had to replace a U-joint in my truck because of this road so bad. Um, I think it's, the speed limit signs would stop a lot of issues and help a lot of the homeowners feel a little more safe about stepping out in their own property. Also, we called somebody. We emailed the mayor, my husband did, and a lady came out to her house. She looked around and said, okay, well, someone's going to come out here and talk about building berms because of the flooding. The flooding is insane out there. Nobody came. Months went down the road. We emailed someone again. No response. So we don't know what's going on with that because we don't have much of ditches going on. We don't have much of anything out there. And um, the lights alone, there might be one, two street lights that hasn't broken out by the bulbs that you can barely see at nighttime. So the safety is a big concern for us. Also, another one is um, the grading. He comes out maybe once every other month. And the roads are so bad again that <laughs> you'd rather walk down it than drive. May I ask a question? Sure. Are you in the, you're in the town of Interlock. That's right. Because the county doesn't have any street lights out. Yeah. So, the, no, we have, we have one. So the town grades your road? Uh, Somebody grades it. The town must be doing it. And that. it's only once every other month. That's the town of Interlock in doing that. So, I mean, we've been there for 18 months. Yeah, the, and, I mean, just the roads are just horrible. Yeah. The, yeah. I, let me give you my card. I'll help you with that. <laughs> that but, sounds great. Because my district takes in the town and Commissioner Abzak also a little bit of the town. <laughs> so we can. We well, can it also help. makes the emergency vehicles, the ambulances, the fire trucks. Uh, slower response time because of the roads so bad and uh, we have our mom who's elderly who's oxygen dependent other things other thing else you know we don't want more issues to happen because of the road okay the town's their own government so here here's my car okay you're okay. welcome all right thank thank Not you COVID, are you? Yeah, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> thank you i'm teasing you <laughs> brian kelly I'm Brian Kelly, I live on 118 Gray Street, Interlochen. Um, no, no sense of beating a dead horse. These people have hit pretty good on some of the bad things, but them roads out there in Interlochen are horrendous. And it is a safety concern because I've got, I've got garbage trucks stuck out there. I've got uh, a whole bunch of pictures. I've had the garbage trucks stuck. I've had the wreckers stuck at the same time. I've had to move my garbage out to the end of the road. And my main thing is, yeah, you said you don't want to embarrass somebody about the committee. I got an email from Nilda and never heard back again saying that, oh, we don't know what time the, uh, the June meetings are or whatever. That's it. Okay. So every time you call her, get the answer machine. Yeah, the roads are horrendous. Um, I had one road I could get back in on on Lime Street. They shut it off. They took the street sign down. I could have gotten in the back property because I own almost a whole lot. They took the street sign down and said they have the right to do whatever, maintain whatever roads they want. Now, I'm speaking about all roads out there as far as, like, safety goes, emergency vehicles, stuff like that. It's a, it's a major concern. I've seen them all stuck, every one of them, ambulances, fire trucks, everything. When we're on fire, I've been out there 40 years. It's not got better. Ditches that deep in the road. Materials, yes. Get told I choose to live out there. I've been there 40 years. You would think in 40 years, the county would make it better. You would think. I did, I did 28 years in the military. I know what accountability stands for. I know what it is. It's important. It's the, it's the safety of the people. And I know it's money, but you got an increase in taxes. I mean, on gas tax, you went up from six cents to 12 cents. Now you want more money. We under, I don't mind paying it, but we need accountability and planning. Planning is important. That's just my opinion. I mean, sure. like I said, 40 years. I have a bus stop. My road is the cutoff to the bus stop, okay? 
they come there. They bring the kids there because they want them to go to Interlock and elementary school. So my road is the cutoff, and they bring them there so they don't have to go to Aquila. So every morning during the school time, I could have anywhere from six to 15 vehicles at the end of the road. They could be stuck. I bought a tractor to pull these people out. I've had Badcock furniture stuck. I've had Lowe's trucks stuck. I've had Aaron's car things stuck. It's ridiculous. And when you do call, like I said, they may call you back, and there has been material out there put in that road. But they say, I, I choose to live out there, okay? But that's fine, but I've been out there 40 years. That's a long time to see no improvement and see it go worse. That's, that's my main concern. And it's safety. Anywhere you look at it, it's safety. And in my, in my opinion, the government needs to take care of the citizens. That's what they'll use against you. We, we, we protect you. So that's what they need to do for us, in my opinion. It's not the taxes. It's the accountability and the planning. And if you're not an expert at the roads, get an expert in there to tell you what the roads are so that we can do it. It washes out every single time. Every time the rain comes, it washes out. And it's not that big of a hill. Okay. All right, I mean, sir. That's basically what I got. Okay. Thank you. Thank Commissioner you. Adams, you had a comment? The, I think it's the top four on this list. They all meet the same day every month, correct? Interlock and Lake Estates 2, South Boulevard, and Night. Your three and my one meet at the. Right. So if you're in any of the top, Interlock and Lake Estates 2, Interlock and Lake Estates South, Interlock and Lake Estates Boulevard, MSBU, Interlock and Lake Estates 19, that meeting is the second Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m. at the Interlock and Community Center. It's every, so to everyone here, I, I've tried to share it on Facebook, I've tried to share it wherever I can. That meeting occurs every month at 6 p.m. at the Interlock and Community Center. I went last month, there, there was more people there than I had seen at any other time. I think there was 15 people between the four MSBUs Unfortunately, the one that I was there for that people asked me to come for, no one came. Um, West oh, and West Putnam. Yeah. So those five all meet the same time every month. So just, if anyone doesn't know when they meet, now you know that they do meet then. And I, I will continue to put it on Facebook as much as I can. I know that I'm just one person, but is there a way we can maybe even get like our county website to put out the MSBU meeting dates and times? I don't see why we can't do that. Facebook, I, absolutely. If, if would, that, would that be helpful too? I, I know a lot of people are on Facebook because some of you have talked to me. Um, the second Tuesday of every month, and that's Interlock and Lake Estates Two, which is north. Interlock and Lake Estates South. Interlock and Lake Estates Boulevard, which is the one that's in District Five. Interlock and Lake Estates Nineteen and West Putnam MSBU. All of those meet at the same location every month different tables in the same room. And if we need to, if it gets to where we got this many people, we can split that up to different days too, if we have to. So just wanna make sure everyone knows because we're all here. So thank you. Okay, next speaker, uh, Rosia Crisp. Well, please come up to the microphone. <laughs> State your name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for seeing us in short notice. I'm Risha Cressa. My husband cannot be here. He's in New York City. Uh, we recently purchased, I'm in interlatching. I don't know if I pronounce it well, but I'm here. I guess I'm part of the uh, MSBU affected by it. Uh, it's, I have six parcel, and according to you, your, the letter you sent me, uh, in order for me to avoid the tax raise, I have to make it one, and I'm not understanding the logic. Um, especially, we just purchased. It's, next month will be a year since we purchased. And we do plan to homestead, you know, like I said, my husband retired, he's a very um, old, excuse me, uh, Vietnam vet. Um, but we wanna do that, but at the same time, we're not able to be able to have the Advelum raised, especially you just had that done. You know, um, um, I think November, um, you raise it, and now it's not even a year, and it's gonna be being raised again. And again, as I've heard other people's concern and stuff like that, I'm on um, 
Twin Lakes Boulevard, Southeast Fifth Avenue, and Southeast Fifth Street. But I guess the next street will be Southeast Sixth. Um, there's a big tree fell down. So even my sister, she was so afraid she wouldn't even move forward because we can't move forward. And yes, I am concerned even though we purchased the six parcel and no one should be living there and stuff like that. And we also have dumping. And once I do move here, I do plan to run for commissioner. So watch out. <laughs> um, uh, we don't have an address yet. I'm on Southeast, you know, the six parcel. Um, it's regarding um, 03-10-24-9-70-0080-1060. And there's six of it. That's the last one you want to assess, you know, to raise it, and another for us to bypass it. We will have to combine it and make it into one. Okay. Can, can you get with me? Pardon me? Will you get with me? Oh, yes. Okay. What's, your, what's your last name? Cressa. C-R-E-S-A-P. That's my card. I'm a disaster manager, and Dr. Cressa is in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, the process for parcel consolidation is covered under the uh, in the resolution under seven section uh, section seven a one. Okay. If somebody elects to combine all their parcels under are there lots under one parcel? Um, is are they a year behind in, in getting the benefit from that? Will they still pay full boat on every single lot this year? Because I would have to research that. We're, we, we're a year behind in our in our taxing. You're looking at that, Mike? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, next speaker, Jan Tedder. Oh, boy. I'm Jan Tedder. I'm at 105 Sun Glow Avenue in Satsuma. And I'm sure you gentlemen aren't too happy to see me. I'm sorry that it's come to this, but um, I'm looking at 24 years, 24 years of nothing. Um, I know it falls on y'all. I know it does, and I'm sorry about that. And it is time for changes, absolutely. It's not just y'all, it's all of us. We all need to get in on this because it affects all of us. I don't even know where to begin. Um, the ditches where I live. We call them the ditches to nowhere, because that's what they are. I don't think anyone's ever even touched them except to make a, a dent in the side of the road as far as mowing. Um, you might see them every once in a while. Grading, it's the same thing. My question is, is there any way that we can get a schedule so that we know when these things are being done, and that way we can be on top of it as well as y'all. Again, I'm old, I'm tired, and I'm sorry, but this has got to change. I've only been here two years. In fact, two years, the 30th of this month, and I love my home, I love my area, but this four times tax increase is killing me. And if you're gonna do it to me, you better do a damn good job. That's all I have to say, gentlemen. Okay, thank you, Ms. Tedder. 
You're welcome. Commissioner Turner. Uh, yes, Ms. Taylor, uh, nice to put a face to the to You the, too, uh, Mr. Turner. I love you. To the phone you. call. We've talked on the phone several times. I love but, you, and I'm sorry, sir, but um, I just couldn't stay quiet on this. One of the things that I'm going to propose, I was going to wait until the end of this meeting, is I think that part of the issue at hand here is that um, we're trying to take the same size round peg and stick it in a round hole for everybody here. And one place has got 95 miles, and, and our, the one, yours is the only one in my district, and it's very small. Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to propose some perhaps some changes to it or whatever when we get done here today. And, and one of those changes is going to be maybe in that particular subdivision, we don't need it graded every month. We might could go in there with leveling blades on the back of a tractor and get somebody to go in there and keep the road smooth and level at a, le at a lesser cost. And then the mowing can be done. At, it does two things. It also takes it away from a contractor that's a site work contractor that owns four road graders at $400,000 a piece and five bulldozers and all this stuff. And it puts it in the hands of somebody that has three zero turn lawnmowers and a skid steer and a, a skid steer and a farm tractor. Yeah. It's not the same. It's not the same game or the same contractor. So that's one of the things that I'm going to propose for that particular subdivision is to find out if we can do that. Um, and another thing is I've been unable to find out who the MSBU committee is for that for that MSBU. That was a the, question uh, I had John also. The Riverside Estates MSBU, do they have an active committee at this time? I'd never even heard of a committee. So you're the MSBU committee? Okay. Well, is before y'all leave today, can I hook you up with one another perhaps and let her know who that... Okay, well, that's good, but I just would like y'all to talk too because I'd like for Miss Tedder to find out because she was talking to me the other day about maybe disbanding and or doing something or whatever, and I tried to explain to her that, to me, that would have to be done by a majority of the residents in the subdivision, and I don't, most residents want the higher level of service. So maybe we can address some of the, this one up more than any other one here. The yes, one sir, that you're living it did. In. It went up to uh, $302. $302.88 where the closest one to it was an increase of 203, where this is an increase of 204 a year yes, so, sir. to 24 a year. So my point is, is maybe we can do something to address the issues and help the MSBUs at a lower cost because it's such a small MSBU compared to some of these ones that are in Commissioner Harvey and Commissioner Adams Act's area where they got 95 miles of road. Well, I think we, got we could a mile live or with two that. A road in the subdivision. So. And that was one of the questions I was going to ask is could we maybe cut it back a little bit, still have it, well, but cut it back a little bit? That's what I was trying to explain to you, Ms. Tedders. It's not really our decision, it's the decision of the, of the MSBU committee. Okay. And so now that I know that we have an MSBU committee in there, that would be who you would address that to if you want a lower level of service for a lower price. But yes, ma'am, okay. we can do just about anything you want as far. We're just trying to get a same level of service in all the, in all the different MSBUs around the county. Yeah. And like I said, when I started this, maybe we're using the wrong size round peg to fit every round hole in all of them because definitely the needs in a small subdivision aren't as extreme as they are in one of the interlocking lakes of states that have 95 miles worth of roads when we don't have that many. So that's something that we need to bring into this conversation, I think, and we're going to today. All right, and the only other thing um, I had on my little old mind is, um, how do we keep up with what's going on? Now, I know you're gonna say, check with the committee. How do you check with the committee? This is all new to me. I well, didn't even know there was a committee. Well, I'm trying to, to get you hooked up with the lady back there, and, and maybe she can tell you when the meetings are and when the, you know, what they do and how they do it. I mean, they even may have a spot on the committee for you to sit on if you want to be there. I, I don't, don't know, know if they're ready for me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so any, anyhow, we're, we'll try to get there. I really appreciate you coming today. I'm, I really do, but we, I we're going to see if we can't make this pig fit this hole a little better. I, 
I, it would be terrific for all of us, for all of us. And again, thank you. I'm sorry that I kind of stirred the pot, but I think the pot well, obviously had you to didn't be stirred stir by yourself, Miss Ted. Or turn around. And God bless around. every one of you. <laughs> every one of you. You know, it takes. What is that saying? It takes a village. Yeah. Well, it takes uh, Putnam County. That's for sure. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next speaker, David Foltz. Hi, I'm David Foltz. I live at I live at 152 Trisail Avenue. The the property that I live on is not really in that same thing because I live on the hard road, but the property that I own that I don't live on is on the corner of, uh, of Bass and Selfish, on the corner. And I've owned it for a couple of years, and it's never been mowed since I've owned it, ever. I'm not, I don't really, can, I don't really care if it's ever mowed. There's nobody that lives right close to there, but I would hate to pay big money and not collect anything at all. The roads going out to there, eh, sometimes they grade them, sometimes they don't. And that don't concern me neither. I don't really care about that because I don't go out there that much. I go out and check on it. But there, I have noticed that for a while there, there was people throwing trash out in there and stuff like that. But so then I went out there again and someone had picked it up. So, I mean, it's kind of a hit and miss type thing there. But uh, some of these properties that people don't live on, I just... You know, I hate to really see, you know, get charged that much when there's really nothing they're doing for me. It, but that's that's one concern. But another concern that somebody did address, I live at the bottom of the canal. And the one that you guys are talking about is plugged up. I'm, I'm the one that lives at the cul-de-sac of that canal. And all and all the all the water is washed down where the clean outs are. And it's washing all the sand from the roads down into that clean out. Then that clean out washes it out and on low tide it's muck that's all it is on high tide you got this much water at that at the most where i'm at there if you go back oh three four lots back five lots back they got eight ten feet of water all the time we're up at that part of the canal we don't have any and i know you guys said you, you know addressing the canal earlier i, I heard uh, you talking about addressing that but uh, my the, the 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 concerns that I got is is it it that much the it went up in that one area for the the roads to be graded and mowed. Like I said, I have never I've only ever seen anybody mow a little bit around there every now and then, and it's only maybe once a year that I've even seen that. But they, it's never made it out to where I where I got my property at. So my concern is I just would hate to pay that kind of money for a lot out there that nobody even lives out in there. So I guess if I have to pay it, maybe they could take and figure out a way to leave that part of it go and, and go do it for the people that do live out there. I guess I, I guess that would be <laughs> the thing. But the canal, I would sure like to see someone do something with that canal. I've, know, I've owned that property for five years now, and it's been that way the whole time. Which MSBU are you in? So it's got an MSBU committee. Right. Okay. All right, then. That's okay. good. That's addressed all mine. I'll let it get going. And thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Adams, Zach. I just want to reiterate the key thing there is if it wasn't mowed, the MSPU wasn't charged for the mowing. So if they were charged, you guys need to let us know that, that they charged for the mowing and didn't do it. Um, is that my understanding? Is that correct, Mike? That's correct. So if they're, if they're charging for services that they're not doing, that money should stay in the kitty, so it should never leave that. So that money would be available to do other things in the MSPU. And that's for, I'm not saying specific to your MSPU, it should be for all of them. So if your committee finds that they're charging for work that's not being done, we need to know that so that we can hold that contractor responsible. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Adams. Uh, next speaker, uh, Norma Crawford. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Norma Crawford. I live at 238 Lakeview Way in Tulacan, Florida, right at off of um, Lady Slipper Boulevard. 
And I don't know how many of you live up there, but if you do, when you come, Lady Slipper Boulevard is always bumpy. They grade it, but it's always bumpy again because I don't think they're using the right materials. But I'm not a contractor, so I don't know for sure. But it shouldn't seem like as soon as they do it and there's a rain that it's <laughs> washboard. My son bought a new car and he damaged part of his car coming around the corner because then that's another problem. When you come around the corner, make the S turn that both sides, I guess, would be um, whatever you're talking about, um, detentions or ditches, mm -hmm. it washes away. Uh, two cars cannot pass there together and everybody doesn't have a brain, so I'm coming around and they're back there speeding. I'm like, okay, I gotta back up. You cannot have a road like that without there being an accident at some point in time because that's what's gonna happen. Um, the right materials cannot be used. You guys have to know what I'm talking about. They have to close our roads sometime. We can't, I mean, we have to pick through, but somebody visiting or if you called for pizza, God forbid, they can't come through. And we don't want them to come through because they'll be hooked up on something. They won't be <laughs> at your house with the pizza. Um, but okay, and that's going on a lot of the same things that you guys are saying. So I need to find out who my MSB um, committee is and contact them. Um, I also wanted to just bring to someone's attention, probably the wrong committee, but we have two illegal mechanic shops and they couldn't be legal because the cars are all over. They're, wherever the people drop the cars off, they're just all over. Now, they're not in front of my house because I'd probably be standing out there until they moved them. But it, it's in the area, in the subdivision where I am. So when people come to visit me, they have to see this. If they're illegal, they shouldn't be there. I think they're dumping their oil in the ground. We live on a lake. So there's a lot of concerns. Again, I probably have to go back to another committee, but since you guys are here willingly listening to me, I'm bringing it up. <laughs> um, we already get paid and um, charged in our taxes for Interlochen Boulevard, which is really not a road I ride on unless mine is impassable. I'm not sure that that's correct either. Um, I think you guys are doing a good job. I just don't think you can do better. It takes all of us. Thank you for listening. Yeah, Thank so Chris Adams, right? that, that's in my district, and I know the Lady Slipper Corner very well because my church bus picks up a child when you make that left and you go there, and sometimes we got to go all the way around the other way. Um, I'm fully aware of it. The, the prior public works director had been out there a few times. They've, they've tried to do a paved thing across the road to try to divert the water. We opened the drain that went under the road and down the road, um, and nothing seems to work. So... It's we a did, work in we did have a group of citizens in your MSBU that came together, and, and again, your meeting again is that same same thing that I announced before. It's yes. the second Tuesday at six um, at the Interlock Community Center, and next month I'll make sure I'm there if I got people committed to actually go. Last month I had ten people ask me to go. I showed up, and no one was there. I will be there from the MSBU. So I just want to be make you aware of that that no one showed up. Um, that is a very bad spot. That that's something that I'm looking to possibly doing other things with because we do have some limited amount of miles for dirt to pave and yes. I have the ability to do that. Um, I'm looking into that. It depends on how it scores compared to other roads, things like that. And that's literally just for that little piece. Yes. That, that's, yes. That's, that's a major problem going in out of there. And I, I know Commissioner Harvey is absolutely aware of that same spot as well. Um, as far as the other part, you can take my card and uh, We'll get you in touch if you, if you choose to open a complaint about whoever's doing the business or something. We'll get you in touch with the right people for that as well. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Thank you again for listening. All right. and Thank happy you. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> okay, next speaker, Frank Reddington. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Frank Reddington. I reside at 152 Bowfin Drive, and that's in the, the MSBU Unit 3. Uh, since being a resident here, uh, a major topic of discussion amongst the property owners has been the maintaining of our roads. And we have done 
have seen nothing done to go forward uh, with that. I think two things could be accomplished if just going forward we abolished the MSBU as to road maintenance and turned the road maintenance over to the county. They're doing it now in our MSBU and they're doing a fine job. Uh, the other thing that could be done would be to take this new assessment, which uh, is a threefold, fourfold increase, and use that assessment to pay, have the county pave our roads, which it's my understanding the county can have the paving done for a, a lot less than what we as individuals or as a, a community could. So if we could get those two things done, uh, I, I think we'd be taking two giant steps towards uh, improving the roads and getting them paved. I think the money that could be saved by paving roads then could be used uh, to continue any roads that weren't paved initially uh, to help with the county with the cost Initially, what they could do is to pave the main arteries and then second, there are roads to be paved at, at a later date and if, to do it in sections if necessary. And as I said, that money that was saved by not having to maintain dirt roads could be used going forward to improve all our roads uh, and eventually uh, get them all done. So, and. As I said, it, with my my neighbors and anyone I speak to, uh, it seems to be the topic of uh, conversation is getting our roads done and going from dirt to pave rather than continuing to kind of put a Band-Aid on it and just fix our dirt roads repeatedly. So, thank you. Okay, sir, thank you. Commissioner Rawls? <clears throat> yes, sir. Um, do you have the total amount that would be collected at 238 per parcel Get in front of you for which um msb you referring to st john's harbor the total we went, that's what i'm trying to figure out is which one we were told it was multiplied times 391 so do you, do you have that number that you're anticipating it's one hundred six thousand nine hundred fifteen dollars 106 mm -hmm. Um, does three hundred thousand dollars a mile sound like a stupid number to pave a road? It's five hundred. It's five hundred twenty-eight thousand was the uh, average between the two different contractors on our last dirt to pave uh, bid package that went out. And they've got um, right around four miles, I believe. Four point three, yeah, four point three miles. So going off of those numbers, it would be two point two million, roughly two point two seven one. So at $100,000 a year on a 20-year basis, that would pretty well take care of that. Just saying, asking for a friend. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Rawls. Um, next speaker, Sherry McCormick. Hey, you said my name, Sherry McCormick. I live at 113 Cardinal Street in Interlochen. Um, just from hearing everybody speak, just for location-wise, that's kind of sort of in the Lake Lucy area out there in West Putnam, MSBU. Um, I've grown up in Interlochen, moved away, came back. So I've seen where there hasn't been change and there has been change. So we sit here saying there isn't been any or hasn't been any change. There has, but very minimal. I've learned over the last couple of years that I just had to start being the squeaky wheel to get the grease. And I think that's kind of summarizing what everybody's complaining about here is yes, the roads are bad. Yes, they're dangerous. Yes, we pay a fee. Uh, Economy-wise, yes, I can see why we may need some increase in the fees. The difference I'm seeing is I'm guilty. Where have we helped our commissioners and our MSBU? Over the, my emails over the last year, I have been told that there is one person handling quite a few MSBU roads in the area and 
one thing is, is they can't see them all at one time. So if we're not telling them our roads are bad or contacting the right channels, they don't know. Um, just a little background, my hill is a very bad hill. Um, sometimes four wheel drive can't get through it. Um, my dad's had to pull people out in the middle of the night because they're stuck. So I get the complaints. I see both sides of the story here. And the best thing to do at this point is, is talk to the people. We can come to these meetings and complain, but where do, where do we stand for the rest of the year after these meetings? And what are we getting with our money? Yes, we're paying more of a fee. So I've heard, just listening to the conversation over the last hour, the county commissioners have said there's meetings, there's committee meetings. I'm guilty. I've been invited to this and I've been nervous because I don't really reside in Nurlocken anymore. I still have an address out there. I still have property out there. And I come out there to maintain it and see it, but I live in Newberry and I work in Gainesville. So my concern is time. I had to take off work to be here today. But that was my first step to trying to help make a change is I just took the time off work. I had to get off at noon four hours out of my day, but I'm here and trying to listen and see what's going on instead of just being the squeaky wheel. So at this point, my concerns to this is, you know, a lot of my concerns have been presented by other citizens and a lot of my answers have been answered by listening to the feedback. I do agree that I did not know about the committee. I did not know even what MSBU stood for about a year ago. <laughs> so I think a lot of it is a knowledge breakdown. You know, county commissioners know that language. I am not a county commissioner. I don't know that language. So I think maybe a lot of it is kind of downplaying some of it for the citizens. Yes, Paul hit the nail on the head. A lot of us are on Facebook. Some of us may not have a Facebook. I get that. But a lot of us are on Facebook. And I tried searching MSBU to see if there was a Facebook group about a month ago. Nothing. So I think a lot of it is we do have some avenues to communicate on the same level with our citizens and the county commissioners by maybe managing an MSBU, strictly MSBU only Facebook group. Unite all of the MSBUs instead of it being one here, one here, one there, have a unified group that we all come to and we can say, okay, our meeting's here on this day. Because a lot of the complaints and the feedback is just a breakdown of communication is what I've gathered. So I think communication is going to be the start to bettering what's going on with the MSBU. Okay. okay. That's, that's right. it pretty much. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Commissioner Harvey. Sherry, thank you very much for coming. And, and uh, you and I have been working on that for quite some time. And her West Putnam MSBU, for years we had one gentleman that ran 95 miles of roads. It's not a fault of Sherry's. These MSBUs were put in place many, many years ago. And then people moved in, and you didn't look at your tax bill. You saw the, you saw the MSBU, but you didn't really know what all that meant and until you had a complaint. And you called the commissioner, you called Public Works, and they said, oh, you live in MSBU. Here's the process. So I, I'm not faulting that. So today what's happened is 30,000 letters went out <clears throat> now everybody knows you live in MSBU, you know, which is a good thing. And now we can start that process moving along. And there is, there is good hope. I'll tell you that, and we'll, we'll get to that. But truly, this is a great time to be talking about roads. And again, I'm going to say this, government closest to the people is the best. So when you have a committee that's in charge of that, and you plug yourself into that, and you contact the, that committee member or that person, Nilda, or, or your county commissioner, and say, I've got a problem with this area, then we can address it. Because that committee member goes out there and takes a look at that problem immediately. Now, what in some areas we've seen where MSBUs had to dig up roads and haul that sand away because it was worth nothing anymore. Okay? We've seen some areas, again, get lime rock. Some areas can't afford 95 miles of lime rock. Just can't afford it. So it's not going to happen to do all the other things they're supposed to do. And plus, let me tell you this. If you want a lime rock road, you'll complain here in the next three, three weeks when the dust gets all over your house and you can't breathe. And that happens too. 
Kevin Dersher, Commissioner Dersher, had a good phrase 20 years ago, and he said, there is no good dirt road, okay? Just some are better than others. So we're, we're here today. This is a great exercise, and I'm excited that now we can get more participation and move this thing better and forward. And you, I thank you for, yes. Amen, brother. Right. <laughs> yeah. If you get these people to show up at our meetings, we can solve a lot of problems. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Adams, Act. Yeah, so there are a couple MSPUs that actually do have a Facebook thing specific for their MSPU, and they get all their neighbors to get on it. It works really well for the ones that I know are doing it. Um, so I'd suggest that if you, any of the leaders for the MSPUs, if you're on Facebook or designate to somebody else if you're not, and because uh, that does let everyone know, hey, this is what's going on in the community. And even the ones that I'm aware of, which there's only two that I'm aware of, they also do other, you know, neighborhood type conversations and things like that. And it creates a little bit of community too. So, and Miss Sherry, we need you back in Putnam County. So you need to get out of Newberry and get back to West Putnam, please. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, may I okay. say something else? Commissioner Harvey? I, I do want to say though, be careful because they, the MSBUs have to operate in the same vacuum we do. We have to operate up here where we can't talk to each other in the back room or side room, outside. We can't make a deal. So when you got MSBU people that sit together, they might be neighbors. They can't talk together unless they're in that public meeting, okay? That's when that can come out. So be careful of that because uh, they operate in the same vacuum we do, okay? Okay, next speaker. Uh Anthony Gentry. Anthony Gentry, 163 Benita Drive. You, I, you know, I spoke last, I think it was last meeting, I don't even remember, and what the concerns are <coughs> with some of the things, <coughs> excuse me, uh, one of the things, Paul, you mentioned was uh, the boards uh, requesting what needs to be done when. We've had times we've requested things, and then the contractor comes out at his free will whatever day he chooses. Half the time it's been during a rainstorm and made everything way worse. We still paid for that. So there are those issues that have been uh, throwing us upside down. As you know, our MSBU is already out of money this year. Uh, it was over a month ago, and being that the new uh, tax won't take effect till the following year, that means next year we're going to be out of money very quickly again. And so the commissioners have the authority to make the decisions. We've already discussed that before. We've had the letters that were referred to before go out that meant nothing to anybody that wanted to address them or respond to them and there are elections coming up are we going to have to start this over again if things change with the commissions uh, the commissioners so you guys just need to make a decision get us off the hook of this one it's out there where nobody wants to service it that's why it's gone up from 35 dollars roughly to 235. nobody wants to service out there you guys have said that the contractors have said it so just Finally, make a decision and get this thing handled for us. Thank you. Commissioner Adams, Act. Mike, is, we're trying to get this so that it goes on the next tax bill, though, right? So that when would the, when would the work start if we move forward with all of this? It would start in October, correct? That would be. Yes, it's, it's being. Yeah, so, so it would start. It, wouldn't, it doesn't lag a year. It would start next year. No, no services yeah. are going to continue. Right, right, but for theirs particular, we're, we're covering the services currently. Yes, the, the assessment. Um, not doing their services. We're not covering another person to do it. We're right, right, to right. Do we're, we're doing it. it. Right, right. But what I'm saying is this, is this is for the services that start in October is what we're discussing. So I don't think you have a whole year to wait. I think you have a few months. In, your, in, your MS, in that MSPU's particular instance, which is very unique. Is yes, the new, the new tax billing will start in October. Right. So the work for the contractor would start in October. If we went forward with this, all the MSPUs would be covered starting October 1st? Yes. Yes. Of this year? Yes. Okay. That's what I'm asking. 
Yep. Mr. Gentry, if you're going to make a comment, please come up. I see what you're saying. You're saying there's be a money shortfall right from the beginning because the right. tax bills don't come until later in the year, in the yes. fiscal year. How do we do that? Oh, the deficits, from what I understand, has been covered by uh, additional funds from the contingency funds that have accrued. Okay. My, my turn. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> Sure. We got the we got the finger. Hang on just a second. All right, Julian. Um, two two point of clarities, I guess. First off, this morning during your regular commission meeting, you approved an MSBU budget resolution, um, which for the MSBUs which carried uh, reserves, they we moved enough money to carry them through the end of this year at a service level that would be satisfactory. All governmental finance we don't get ad valorem October 1st either. So we budget revenues and we budget expenditures. And so you, we work off of budget dollars for our operations. October 1, we're gonna have a budgeted revenue line for each of these MSBUs at the fee so set by the board and a budgeted expenditure line that corresponds to those revenues. So there's in governmental finance, you have two different things. One's budget and how you operate, and then obviously your financials and your, your actual dollars are accounted for at the end of the fiscal year when we do the AFR. So they'll be getting grading October 1st is what you're saying? They're getting grading now. No, no, I, but I'm saying for what is budgeted if we vote on this to move yes. this forward. Yes, well, they're going to get it. They're going to continue to get it. So this particular MSBU, um, is it St. John's River's Edge? Yeah, St. John's, St. John's Harbor. St. John's Harbor. Uh, St. John's Harbor had, we moved dollars into reserves as well as into their expense line from this morning's meeting that allowed this year's services to continue what we couldn't supplement from county staff. They're gonna go ahead and, and supplement from their reserves. And then October 1st, you're gonna get those services that are laid out as the committee establishes and or as the 12 months of cycle establishes. And then when the money comes in, it just comes in and we track that separate. Yes, so, sir. So you're, you're good from that perspective. Thank you, Commissioner Rawls. So I think part of the, the issue with this particular MSBU is that they are gonna start off behind the eight ball there's not going to be enough money to be able to do a basic level of maintenance and catch up um, what's been missed over the past three, four, five, six years, when, especially when it comes to the drainage portion. Um, a lot of the issues they're having are from drainage, um, and that, that's not going to be addressed the way we're doing it right now. And so they're going to have to go in and, and voluntarily say, okay, we don't want to be graded for two months at a time, Leave, no, don't mow the grass, um, once or twice this year and then try to scrape together a little bit of money and then start doing ditch work. And I'm, my question is, is how do we get them to a reset position to where they can be maintained? Because over the years, as the dollars did not increase, their services dropped off, the roads, the ditches, and everything else has gotten bad. And the, the elephant in the room, is, as far as they're concerned, is that... Um, uh, the drainage into the canal and the fact that the roads are impacting the canal and now you've created another problem that needs to be cleaned out so it, how, how does that get talked about again that will require collaboration with the committee um, and the level of services they're anticipating using and if there will be a contingency uh, fund available that didn't answer the question well, it kind of did. yeah but it kind of didn't it kind of did. but i mean <laughs> Right, please exactly. don't understand that. No, uh, if the committee wants a higher level of service to do more projects, and they just need to assess more money for the higher level of service and more projects. But, but I'm saying that's the question that needs to be asked right now before we move forward with this, because the, the way I see it, they're starting off behind the eight ball. They're going to have to expend money to get everything. Be up to the committee to, to say, look, we want more money for more projects. We're behind the eight ball, so instead of 235 a year, we want you to raise ours to 300 a year where we'll have that. No, I'm just saying that you'll have that other $75 well, they, a year to do other projects other than. This is the committee that wrote the letter asking us to do away with it. Okay, but, it, so, but a majority? 
A majority of this committee wrote a letter. We got a letter from their. I got a letter from one man. Right. Sorry. right. So they're. One man. Right. I was at, I was at the meeting. I knew this was coming. So. If the. I'm sorry. I'm oh, good. I'm, I'm fine. Him at all, Mr. All right. Chairman. I'm trying to constructively participate. Mm -hmm. I really am. So, if the committee wants to disband their MSBU, then I think we need to send out the letters and send out the letter to the people and say. And if the majority wants to do it, because what the majority may want to do is fire the MSBU committee and hire a new MSBU committee that actually wants an MSBU. I don't know that to be the case. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that if y'all want it abandoned or uh, abolished, then we need to go through the motion to abolish it. And I don't think I know that we have the authority just to yeah. throw a pen, yeah. but uh, I'm not going to vote for that. I think that the letters need to be sent out. Do you want an MSBU or not? Because that's what we had to do to get it in place in the first place was ask them, do you want one? Let me ask you this. If, if, if this MSBU was put into play for one year, is, there, is that possible to give, give us time to, for, the, for the citizens and for the commission to work together over the next 365 year, days to come up with a... A, a, a more viable solution to their problems because I, I personally think that if we go down this road like this, I mean, I really do. Should be done now. What? Everything you're doing today is annual. Right, everything's annual. So the the the. Okay. One year. Would can somebody from the MSVU come up and answer a question? Or or Mr. Gentry. Mr. Gentry, are you on the MSBU? Can you, yeah. Okay, you please come would, forward. Would that help, do you think? Um, if it took the next year, and, and every time the MSBU met, we, you know, we were engaged with the, with the county to be able to work towards a, a permanent solution, whether it's paving, um, uh, grading, to get all the problems solved out there once and for all. Well, based on the letters that have gone out, no because the letters don't tell anybody what's going on. Nobody comes to the meetings when they know about the meetings, so they don't know what's going on. Um, you talk about the committees having the, the authority. Well, we don't have any authority. Well, all we have the authority to do is talk, call Nilda and say, our roads need to be graded, and she gets it scheduled with a contractor that you guys sign contracts with. We didn't get assigned the contracts. We don't even get to go out and talk to the guy without getting yelled at, saying, hey, this is what needs to be done on this road. We're not supposed to talk to him. So we have no authority. So <coughs> by, uh, by putting is the blame, there, is on, there, the, is putting in, the blame I mean, on the is there MSBU on their boards yeah, is totally wrong. Right. Right. That's about right. Uh, Ma'am? Uh, no, no. I need to talk to you. I've already looked up your prop. Your prop. I'll need to talk to you later on. Yes, so just I'm hang around. Hang around. Okay. Okay. Thank you. What I'm, what I'm trying to drive is what. What kind of solution can we get to? What, you know, there's got to be a, a, a compromise between the two parties right now. It sounds to me like there may be a misconception on the part of the MSBU, maybe you guys have a lot more authority than you think you have based on what I'm hearing right now. Is that, is that the case? They do. And then how do we convey that power to them and let them know they have it? have to be communication, I guess, Mike. We'd have to yes, that's, that's what the meetings are for, like is to, to meet and to, to address the concerns and to, to perform the work that's desired by the committee with the funds that are available. You're, you're gonna generate the better part of sixty thousand dollars a year, is that correct, Mike? One hundred and six thousand. One hundred and six thousand. Yeah, I got it written right here in front of me. You can spend that one hundred and six thousand over the next twelve months, at, starting October first. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, but the way they want, correct? Yes. So if the focus is cleaning out the ditches, getting rid of the trees, getting everything reprofiled, and all that, that's up to y'all. Okay. Would that is that helpful? 
Well, we, we know what we can tell the county, Nelva, I'm using her name because that's who we contact, uh, that we are ready for the ditches to be done, we're ready for our roads to be graded, we need lime rock delivered, you know, we know all those things. But in the past, um, we've only been doing, what, 16,000, now it's going up to 106,000 a year. And um, so 16 didn't go far. So it was very limited on what we could do, especially each year that I've been out there, the, the cost has gone up a little bit, but now all of a sudden it's just drastically gone up. And that's the dilemma we're in. If we're that close to being able to just pave the roads, that's what we'd prefer to have done. So what, what but then, would it- But then again, it goes out, <clears throat> either you guys make the, the uh, decision to do it, or you're asking us to, or asking that a letter go out, but then the letters to come back with um, responses given based on no information. So how do you expect 400 and some lots to be responding to what they don't know the cost is gonna be? And again, most of the people that are speaking right now actually live there. The ones that respond, no, I don't want to pave the roads, they've probably never even seen their lot in 10 or 15 or 20 years. So those are some of the responses you get because they, all they know is, no, I don't want to pay any more in taxes. But they don't know how bad the roads are, they don't know how bad the ditches are, and so forth. So we're fixing in this road where you're going to collect 106000 a year. Is it possible to form a letter that advises everybody, you're going to be paying $238 a year. If, if you would like, we can pave the road with this $238 a year and over the next 20 years assess this. Huh? I don't know how you can do that. I don't know how you can put yourself, because the county can't pave it for $238 a year. They'd already have done it. No, no, what I'm saying is, is if, 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 if we set up a paving MSBU, that's, that's um, when I asked last time, I said that amortization can be set up for 15 to 20 years. The answer was um, yes. So if we set it for 20 years and we notify the, the constituents that um, here's your options. Right now it's $238 per lot. Um, you, get pay, you get graded. Or we can go 238 per year for the next 20 years and we're going to pave you. Those but, are false numbers. Because 22 million divided by 15 doesn't come up. 20, yeah, 20 years. 20 years. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 million over 20 years. Hey kids, sir. Yeah, that's we're. It's not 22 million. It's two million. Yeah, two is million. what the paving cost would be. Um, so it, I think that's that's part of what the the frustration has been is that when the last letter went out, they were under the impression that there would be an option, paving versus grading, um, but the option didn't hit. It was just um, then there was no actually no dollar signs right. It was a. a, a just a blank Both letter, roads basically. paved or do you not? That was it. Right. Um, wasn't, even think, a, wasn't even a new uh, dollar amount put into what the increase was going to be. Right. Because they can't, but they can't give you that dollar amount. We, the attorney already told us that, that it's just an estimate. And if we put an estimate out there, then there's going to be people that try to hold us to that. So until it goes out to bid, how could we possibly? I mean, I'm, I'm in between the two, two <laughs> Mr. Turner and Mr. Rawls. I, I get what he, Mr. Turner is saying. If, if you want to dissolve the MSBU, you got to get the votes to dissolve the MSBU. I, I agree. I couldn't say the five. I wouldn't vote for dissolving it because eight of you are here. I, I, there's 400 people that need to be represented as well. There's, there's 400 lots. And, there's about eight and everyone has sure. the same rights to those roads, whether they're there or not, whether they live in the state or not. They do. They've been paying the same amount you guys have been paying for all the time that they own the property. I mean, that, that just makes sense. They, they, they pay the same exact amount. We don't charge them less because they never come here and never use the road. I mean, you got to keep that in mind, too. I do agree. I think there is probably a path to figure out how to pave part of your MSP. I, but I think that needs to be worked out by you guys with your community. I don't see how we could possibly say it's going to be $2.3 million when we don't know what's going to happen with oil prices. We don't know what's going to happen with any costs going into building the road to give you an estimate day one before we're two years out probably from when the paving would actually happen. And I don't think our procurement allows us to do that. But well, how are you doing we, the dirt to paves now? 
when we put you, we we put them out you? to bid, and if they came in too high, we wouldn't be able to do all the ones we do. We would have to pull something off. But you have a budget that you're going to do so many roads under under that budget, and then you get the cost for that. I don't. That's not how we do. We put it out for procurement, and then we fund it from the dirt to pave money. And if, if there's more, I think I heard what you said. If I may just interject, Mr. Chairman, quickly. Um, I think what the confusion here between the two of y'all is, if we have $10 million, which we very seldom do to pave roads with, and the, the budget, the bids come in at $12 million, we cut roads off the right. list until we get back within budget. Because right. we can't spend more than what we have. So that's well, the, the same way it would work with y'all. One of the things that came up probably last year during one of these meetings was the roads need to be have a grade given to them in order to put them into road to pave or dirt to pave Same. and and our roads have been scored and we have several of them i think two or three of them that are 30 which in my understanding means it should be available and ready to be put on their dirt to pave list so there's that thought too mr harvey thank you, we'll thank you mr chairman real quick um 391 lots in your area, 239 people residing outside of Putnam County. Um, 21 people don't live in there, but live in Putnam County, and 131 do live in that area. So it's pretty neat numbers that I'm watching here. Um, but that's not my conversation. My conversation to you, remember a couple months ago when this letter went out, you were only short, what, seven or eight people to make that swing? Uh, Did you ever get the public? Maybe 14. I asked you if you did you ever go to Public Works and get the no got the records of who they were no. because that could possibly change. That's only seven people changing their mind when you got 14 out. So it's not like it's a big. Don't lift. we have to have them at a meeting that you just said in order to get them to change? Now, their I mind? would I would do something. I would say, hey, I, I got seven more people here that can switch that number around. I think that that's a good start. You're also on the right track that you know there's. There's a pathway to success here, and there's ways we can get this done. Mike, I got a question for you. In the past, we have had some drainage areas where we went in there and took dirt out of, now you can call it a canal or whatever, but if it's our material washing down in there, we have a right to go get it as long as we're not in the river or the lake or something. I think canals are man-made, but do we still have that ability if it's, if it's our material that's clogging that up? Sometimes you do, yeah. Well, it, it, it depends on the, ty the type of waterway on whether right. or not we can access it and what will be required. But I think the drainage that they're primarily referring to is the drainage uh, that's within the MSBU that requires them to maintain it. Well, that's not what I heard. I heard that there was a drainage area outside the MSBU. Everything drained there, and now it's all stopped up. And until that's cleared up, that MSBU is not going to drain at all. I would have to look at it. Okay, good. And, and review the terms and conditions of the MSBU, make sure it's outside of it, make sure it falls under our responsibility, and then go through the proper procedures from there. Okay. Commissioner Turner? Uh, I have nothing to add to answer my question there. I just think we need to be very careful right. about messing with private, mm -hmm. about messing with private canals. We need to be very careful because we, number one, we can't work on private property. We can't. And about, and, uh, and I don't think we want to open the can of worms when we start cleaning out this one canal because we got 56 of them in East Plaquemines, Duns Creek, San Mateo, and all in there that we'll have to go start cleaning them out too. So but if if if, there, if if our material is in there in that canal, how does that how does that work? <clears throat> I understand. <laughs> I can give you the exact same scenario just real quick that right comes to head down at Georgia Boys Fish Camp. Yeah. Right. Water runs right down the middle of a dirt road and runs all the water right off of the canal underneath his boathouses. We don't go clean it out because it's been deemed by legal that we don't have to and that it's not our issue. Okay, I tried to get it cleaned out. I was unsuccessful. So same exact scenario, only the, it's the county's road, the county's dirt road, and the water runs right down and washes the dirt into the canal underneath the man. Are we canal. allowed to do that? Huh? Are we allowed to, to deposit lime probably rock and not, sand? Probably not, but I, I guess the uh, sand deposit police hadn't showed up yet. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it, one other concern regarding ditches, as you know, I sent you the pictures. Yeah. That it wasn't 
anything the MSBU asked for. It right. wasn't anything that the county asked for. It wasn't anything that the contractor did. It was a subcontractor for the electric utility yep. that came in, used their giraffe, cut down trees, and then had a landscape company come in. And instead of pulling the branches out of the ditches and running them through their mulcher, they drove a tractor down in there. And that's one of the concerns this other mm -hmm. uh, gentleman had was that they tore up the ditch. Yeah. They left they left branches buried in the ditch because they just ran over them, not didn't cut them up. And now you, when the county goes in and mows, they're going to have branches sticking up out of the ground this big around that they won't see and start damaging their equipment. This so, was done by Clay Electric. No. Sorry, they did. Clay Electric hired somebody and they, they, they literally left the tree limbs in the ditch. Then when they he, he sent me a picture of the tractor stuck. And they pushed it down. The, the, everything was pushed in the mud in the ditch. But the problem is the ditch is not a ditch. It's a mud puddle. Um, it doesn't flow. It doesn't convey water. And that's the, uh, back to my original comment. If the, if the ditch overflows the road and, and starts to cut the road, then we have to get them to a point where everything is working properly. Will you all be amenable to paying more money um, if, if that's what it took to get to a point in the, for, in the next year to get everything correct right dug out and there may be a few but there's going to be a whole lot more complain about more money especially when you're already getting complaints from 35 to 235 right. right i'm using round numbers i know i mean it sounds like we're, we're, we're probably going to be close but y'all need a lot of work out there to get everything right otherwise it, it, it just seems to me like if you bake a half-baked cake you, you don't have a cake and they need um, a lot of work to get them back to where everything works properly and then start maintaining it. Right now, I don't know that what you need is it could be considered maintenance. Okay. It needs to be repaired. Okay. Commissioner well, Turner. I, I think that on. one road, Bill knows better than I do what the cost was. We got a hundred and some trees, you know, yeah. growing through the ditch and the trees are this big around it's because it's, nothing's been done to them for it, How much is, did y'all ever get a price on that, Mike, or anybody? The tree removal that's in the ditches, the, all the trees? I would have to follow up. I'm, I'm not aware of it. Okay, he'll, he'll follow that. We need to keep okay. moving forward, guys. Uh, Commissioner Turner, you had a comment? You know, I, I think they need to, we, we just established that they went from sixteen to $106,000 a year. So hopefully they can fix some of these ills in there. Money is going to help some. So, and then if it turns out, what? Tony, I don't know what to do for you. Every time you come in here, I do my very best, I mean, to making the motion to get, that we went in and started doing the work in the MSBU when you ran out of money. I've done, I don't know what else to do for you other than to, if you, if you need more money to make this happen, I don't know what to do for you, Tony. I don't know what you're asking of me today and other than you just being angry with me. We went to 106, not so we could spend more money, so that we could pay the contractor what he was requesting to get the normal status quo job get, done. You get to decide how much of that work is done and what it's spent on. Is that not correct, Mike, or am I missing something? Yes, sir, that's correct. So you get to decide. And we got to decide on the 16,000, too. I understand, but it's, and you ran out of money quickly. But now it's 106. That was, that was this year. Huh? Okay. Yeah, that was this year. But the only reason it's at 106 isn't because we needed more money. It's because the contractor required more money. But if you do, if you decide to do less services, yeah, if you decide to do less services, then maybe you could take some of this and fix some of these other issues. Maybe you only need 11, 11 a year. Maybe it's going to take more to get it done, and maybe you just can't do it at all, and you have to come to the commission at some point and say, look, we got a road in there that's 30. We got a road in there that's 30. Uh, would would the uh, commissioner in your district go to bat for you to try to get that one road done under the better place plan money, dirt to pave? Believe me, the commissioner has something to say about it. If you've got yeah. two that's 30, or two, one that's 29 and one that's 30, and one of them has a bunch of traffic and the other one doesn't, the commissioner has something to say about that. Okay. I'm telling you, we, they try to make out like we don't, but we do. When it comes down to uh, that's all I'm asking is that the thirty on a, on a heavily used road versus a not so much used road. And, and Jeff, they can't hear you. 
y'all would y'all go to full blown paved at that point. If if we're kicking in money, why wouldn't y'all want to go ahead and kick in the rest and go to a full paved MSBU and get off this um, the the uh, dirt portion of it? Well, I uh, seeing how I'm on the floor. I have the floor. Um, I think that would be an issue, but I don't know it's what we need to be discussing today. It's whether or not we're right. going to pass this resolution to charge this additional money to make the MSBUs work. Right. I'm open. I've tried to help any way that I could within the power that we have so far to do it. And I get what, you know, what they want and what have you. And, but as district three County commissioner, I don't think it's my place to go in there and say, okay, in, in your district, you need to go over there and you got two roads that are a certain thing. Let's pave their road instead of this one over here. I don't think that's my place. And I damn sure ain't going to give you none of my stuff in District 3 to be able to go over there and right. pay the road in your district. That needs to be a, a decision that's made by you and made by them. But I don't have any issue. I think uh, Mr. Harvey has said for years now that, that we need to start looking at some of that, uh, that some of the just because the MSBU pays the money doesn't mean they're completely out of the loop to pay the on, on, uh, on services. And I think uh, Commissioner Harvey's been talking that for two years now. And that's part of this process that we've been doing here is to get us back into that to where if, if that road is necessary to be done, then they, they have the same right to get it done as anybody else if it if it uh, if it uh, points out that high, scores that high. I think at one point not too long ago, we discussed the possibility of chipping in some money and helping them as well. So the point is, is if, if, if this is only for 365 days, then it gives us time between now and this time next year to come back to the table and, and see which direction you guys want to take the MSBU in at that point. But we did chip in some money, Jeff. We chipped no, 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 I mean, I mean towards paper, to no, chipping going in. until right, this show, showed up. No, we, we, we talked about maybe us putting up 25% and yeah. all that. So, I knew it. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know how that makes y'all feel, um, but it, it, get, it gets us a, a starting point right now and gives us 12 months to be able to end this conversation next year. All right, Commissioner Adams Act, then we'll move forward. Yeah, I just wanted kind of what Mr. Turner was saying and Mr. Rawls combined, like the lady that came and talked about Lady Slipper, that corner that literally gets where there's a two foot ditch across the road where you literally can't go through it. I mean, my big van can't cross that when it washes out. So that's an example of where that road does score high, but I have other roads that scored higher. So it didn't get on this year, my next dirt to pave, but I'm probably gonna put it on the one after that. Um, just because it scores high enough and it's now the, the two or three roads I had that were worse are done theoretically once we get that dirt to pave then I'll put it on there but you got to remember we're weighing that against all the other roads in our district so it's not just so you just got to keep that in mind too there's there's a lot of roads that are county roads I, I've been in your neighborhood I'm, I'm telling you there's a lot of county roads that are worse than every road in your neighborhood I'm telling you that right now. I know that for a fact. I've driven hundreds of miles of roads in this county, and uh, yours are in the top 30%. Okay, thank you, Tony. Okay, next speaker, James Jenkins. Good afternoon, gentlemen. My name is James Jenkins. I live at 241 Union Avenue. And I think my biggest complaint on the roads is the fact that uh, sand trucks, and I understand that we do need sand and we've got big holes that we dig to get the sand for our roads. But on Union Avenue, it's, it's a through road that goes to a lot of homes out there. And there are sand trucks that start at 7.30 and there's three of them that run until 4.30. And my road's not the only one that the sand trucks run on. I know there's other holes out there. And sometimes they bring debris back and put them in the holes. So the poor person that is doing the grading, he may do a good job this month, but 
it it's to no avail with all of the sand trucks that that pound it and that that's some heavy weight and i i just wonder you know how much longer are the sand trucks going to run to ruin some of those roads that that you have to work so diligently to keep up and i know you probably don't have any control over the sand trucks, but um, it's really bad. And you talk about dust, they pound a lot of dust in my house, a lot of dust. So uh, I just wanted to bring that to your attention, and uh, if there's anything you can do, uh, it would be, you know, greatly appreciated. Um, but, you know, the person that used to do the grading uh, a year or so ago did a really fine job. He probably, excuse me, probably retired, but uh, with the sand trucks running now, the other guy just can't keep up with it. And that's bottom line. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Commissioner Harvey. Mr. Jenkins, he, he actually passed away. Is that the, right? The contractor did. Uh, and um, his son-in-law has taken over some of the business, but it's, it's a little bit more than he could do, so he didn't bid on that job. Yeah. Um, so he went. He did. The, the other gentleman did a fantastic did. job. And, and we do have two, two clay pits out there behind your house yeah. in that area. And they are permitted, and they do run. And if there is a problem, all you got to do is let us know, and they will go out there and grade. They'll fix it. For example, when Florida Gas was bringing their their p pipeline through that area, right? Um, they actually went out there. We did some emergency repair, and they paid the MSBU back for that for that work that was done. So if there's a problem more than normal let us know we can they'll they'll fix it they already said they would so yeah well they they brought sand uh dirt to the uh, the corner there on citrus and yes sir. uh and fix that a little bit because it was the sugar sand was just terrible people you know got stuck there uh my son-in-law got stuck up the road and had to be pulled out i mean it's the sand is, it gets deep like snow. Do you know yeah. you're, you're actually in one of the highest elevations in Putnam County. So the highest is not far from you to the north. Yeah. It's, so your elevations out there go. I know. Free, yeah. You know, and where's the water going? Yeah, <laughs> so, it down. Yeah. It comes right past yep. it, heavy rain, yep. you know, right down. And, it, and those poor people, the next hill over, they get really get bad. Hammered. Let us know when that, when you I have. I sure will. Okay, so thank, thank you. you. I've called thank before. You. <clears throat> Good, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, next speaker, um, Mr. Bill Thompson. Oh, reason to this. Yeah, right. More cards. <sighs> Good afternoon, Bill Thompson. 123 Kingfish Avenue, Placa, Florida. That's uh, St. John's Harbor. I am the MSBU chairman for St. John's Harbor MSBU. Uh, one thing I'd like to address real quickly is Mr. Copper's uh, concern about the drainage. We have been addressing that for two years with Public Works. There's an easement that goes across a private piece of property that the MSBU cannot touch. That is the issue. The water has no place to go. It can't get to the canal. Uh, we have gone in and added material to the road to build it up so under normal conditions the water doesn't stand in the road. But other than that, till we get that easement cleaned to the canal, it, it's going to continue. And that, like I said, you have a record that goes back over two years to ask Nilda. So uh, that quickly, uh, the uh, RMSBU was put out in 96. Most of the people that live in that community were not around in 96. Uh, it's been a patchwork of 
of repairs and things over the years uh, with the old with the last contractor uh, the costs were reasonable uh, we probably got what we paid for but in October of last year the county let a new contract the which the prices went up astronomically uh, grading went from 275 a mile to 1250 dollars a mile mowing went from fifty dollars a mile to uh, I've got it here, but it's seven hundred fifty dollars a mile. But you know, the cost of this new contract is just not affordable. I understand we're out at the end of the spectrum. I understand the contractor's got to pay for this equipment, but also understand that the citizens in this MSBU have already paid for a fleet of equipment set in public works. So why are we buying for a contractor somewhere else? So you know it. it comes a time when the cost and the benefit do not add up. The municipal service benefit should have a benefit to the people that it serves. And with the cost increase of this new contract, uh, I question the cost of that benefit. It needs to be looked at very seriously and we need to determine is it time to abolish this MSBU. This board has the power to do that. They don't need the citizens input to do that. Florida Statute 125.01 tells them they can do that. So, you know, uh, the ball's in your court. Uh, you know, if the other thing that needs to be addressed is whether or not, and I'm still confused, is this a segment per partial or per lot? Because the, the letters that came out indicated partial. I currently pay an MSBU assessment per lot. Okay, there's a difference. I own two partials, five lots. If I'm going to pay an extra thousand dollars, then I expect a whole lot more service than what I've been getting. You pay five assessments now. Yes. So. What, what, what's your um, What's your address, Bill? Say again. Give me your address again. Address. What's your address? One two three Kingfish. This was part of why I was asking the questions earlier because when we were at the meeting, it, it, it was clear to me that people were paying multiple assessments, but I'm being told you're not. Um, so I don't, let me look this up real quick. Mr. Chairman, may I make a comment? I'm going to go to Commissioner Turner first. We'll go get in order. Excuse me, Jim. Um, Commissioner Turner. Um, you wrote us a he wrote us a letter that said that you were requesting that the MSBU be abolished. Is that you personally or you as chairman of the... That is me personally. Personally. Okay. That was a personal letter. Okay. So it wasn't as chairman of the MSBU no. committee. Okay. So if... I know that we don't have to. I know that we have the authority. <clears throat> but there's this commissioner, and I may be one of only five, but this commissioner is not going to abolish an MSBU because one, two, three, or eight people want to do it when there's 400 people that live out there. Somebody not in the Not 400 past, people. That, what'd you say? There, there's 400 lots, but they're not occupied. Yeah, but they, they got just as much right to that road as you do. Just because they don't live there doesn't mean they have, don't have the right to that road. They're paying taxes on it, too, and paying services on it, too. So the only way that I'd vote to abolish this was if personally would be as if we sent a letter out to the members and said if we don't get the if we don't get an answer back from you we're going to abolish it and there won't be any more additional services to your roads. That's the only way that I'll go along with it. Now I may be one of five here and get outvoted, but that's the only way that I'm going to go along with it because I don't think it's fair for us to listen to five or six people about something about abolishing, just like we won't listen to five or six to start one in another area. We've had some that's come within three or four people of getting enough people to have 50 plus one in another area, and we wouldn't start it because we were just a few people short. So you, you got to have some kind of rule, and my, my personal rule would be we, we're going to have to ask the people who actually are paying now that's just my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. Then we need to send the letters out. Okay. Commissioner Adams Act. 
I, I, I have no, no problem with sending out the letters. I mean, if that's what your MSP decides you want us to do, I think we should. We have several members here. You can take a poll right now if you want to get a straw poll. That I means nothing, but... What does it take for us to send out I'm a letter ask asking to abolish the, the MSP? The committee needs to do it. As a committee, they need to send us a, a, a request to send out a letter to ask would they abolish the committee. I mean, would they abolish the... Uh, the MSB? And yes, no, just like the other one. Well, and do what? And it would be yes, no, 50% plus one? Right. right. And so then the, the committee, if they say no. When, when do you guys meet next? If it, if, if it turns out it's no, then. Right now, right. No. we schedule a meeting monthly to bi monthly as needed. I mean, maybe pull a meeting together quicker and get that to us. I mean, I agree with Commissioner Turner. If you guys as a committee came to quorum and said that you want a letter sent out to abolish the MSBU, uh, I'm for us sending out a letter and then I'm all for abolishing it if the majority of people want to abolish it. But I don't think your services will be any better under the county than under the MSBU. I just want to make, make you aware of that. Go drive county roads and just think about it. Before you, just as part of your decision making, I'm recommending to go drive First around other areas. Would be willing to take that gamble. Right. Okay. All right. I'm all for that. I think you guys should try that. Okay, ma'am, ma'am. Specific no. to their MSBU, one location. Just, ma'am, it's a specific to one specific location. One MSBU. Okay, Commissioner Rawls. Bill, <clears throat> um, I'm looking, looking right now. It looks like you are charged for two, um, you're, you're paying for two fees. Uh, you only have one parcel, but you are being charged. He has, uh, he has some across it, the road. Bill, will you come back on, up? On, on this can... one parcel I'm looking at, it shows that you have, you're paying two um, times $34.96 for a total of $69.92. I also own 102 Redfish. Yeah, he owns across the road. Right, that, but that, that's a separate parcel of land. Yes. What I'm saying is why, why, Mike, is he having to pay for two on a total of 0.46 acres that doesn't seem to make sense. No, that MSBU is assessed by the platted lots. Well, that was the question earlier. So they're, they're paying by the lot, not by the parcel. This particular one is. Not all of them are. But wow. some people combine, they combine lots and they did change. Yes, there is provisions, you know, to where you can consolidate your platted lots and, and, and pay uh, by parcel consolidation. Can you look at his particular one and tell... What, is there anything that he needs to do to get it to where he only pays one? Yes, there's uh, in the uh, resolution, section 7A1. So uh, he one. says it's not combined is what you're saying? Yes, it's not combined. Okay, because looking on here, he only has one parcel ID number, but he's paying two shares. It's because it's two platted lots. But if they, they fall into one parcel ID number. Again, he has to do the, the uh It's, it's the way it was made. Process. Is that what he's saying, Bill? Right now, I have two parcels. One has three lots, one has two lots. So you, he's saying you have to go and combine the three lots into one and the two lots into one. I received two letters, which tells me they're already combined. Okay. So to his point, if he, and, and I'm looking, he's under one parcel with two lots, but he's paying two shares, and he's fixing to have to pay the better part of $500 <coughs> um, for that one, for one lot, and a hundred and, and, and um, almost seven fifty for another. I think this is part of what I've been hearing at the meetings too. Is that there seems there, there, there doesn't seem to be equity in the way people are paying. And have you done parcel consolidation yet? It is already consolidated. Okay, that's that's why you're going to be paying by the parcel and not the yeah. platted lots. But his, his tax. I'm looking at his tax bill. Says he pays. For one of them, he's paying two, two shares. Well, he has two different parcels, correct? No. For one parcel, he's paying two shares. I li yeah. the, the one parcel I live on. Two different parcels with multiple platted lots on each parcel, correct? But, Mike, one parcel <coughs> that I'm looking at, one parcel, he's paying two shares. Yes. That's because he has two lots. He has not went. He, he has no. He has a he has a parcel with two lots on there. 
I would suggest before we go too much further down the road about telling them what they need to do with their property, that they reach out to both the property appraiser's office to see what the requirements are, and then consider what the planning department may be if they ever wanted to undivide those lots or unseparate those lots right. before we go down that road. Right. But right now, as Mr. Nimmons is saying, these are based on a platted lots, not parcels, platted lots. So he has two lots in there. That's why he has two assessments on the one parcel. I understand that, but I'm looking at the property press website. There's one parcel ID number. With two lots. Nope. Lots 14 and 15, I'm looking at the same thing. And 13 and 14. Or 13 and 14, but I'm looking at the same thing. One parcel ID number, he's being taxed because for a lot, not lots. for I understand that. What we're saying is that because of the way it's set up is being, being assessed on the platted lots, not the platted parcel numbers. So that's, that's why he's having it. So if you're gonna combine those lots into one lot, it'll go from 13 to 14 to, to either 13A or whatever, that's gonna be a question that he's gonna have to run through the property appraiser's office and then through the planning department if he ever wants to do anything with those parcels in the future. So I will be careful with that. Whenever in 1996 they set it up, they set it up by lot for that particular one, which is different than other ones. Not really. Yeah. Okay. What what's, 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 say what happened? Okay, and then we'll give a, him a suggestion of what he needs to do. Okay, to I'm, to I'm not an situation. attorney, but back in those days, when people had the right to combine their, their property, they gave up some development, future development. So that's why people combined it. You might not want to do that because My you might want to split that. Cross I'm not an attorney. I, I really think you need to talk to our planning department and our property appraiser before you go down that rabbit hole because it, you might, people might give up what they, they might want to use their future investment, split that property, give it to their child, give it to their neighbor, sell it, whatever. You, that's why you got the assessment you got, okay? I'm still confused. So. You, you, said, you said you've combined, Bill, Bill, you said you combined them. Did you combine them? They're listed as a partial with two lots. To me, that tells me it's combined. If it's not combined, then I need to know what I need to do Does he need to combine to go to the it, because my house sets if across you, you, both you need of those to go, lots. You need to it's go not to, going anywhere. You need to go you need to, to um, Tim Parker, the property appraiser. And the planning department. And then the planning department, which would be Gabriel Quintus. Okay. So gonna be a five. Next speaker, Jim Mosley. Are you frozen back there, sir? <laughs> My name is Jim Mosley, 155 Kingfish in the St. John's Harbor. Uh, I guess MSB, whatever it is. Could you, we can't hear you. My bad. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, y'all heard my address and everything. My question is, like I said, y'all said y'all didn't have so many letters going out that y'all needed seven more for the paving or whatever. And from what I've heard, the, the misinformation, the information that wasn't given to everybody on all, all, everything that was going out, I think if everybody had known that, you might have got those seven different people to, to come over. And then it, one other question, if y'all do away with the committee, what happens? It goes back to the county then? And y'all are saying the county's not that good, but I got to say for the last paving or grading we got was from the county, and it's probably the best we've had all year, in my opinion. So I'm, the county doesn't do it monthly. That's that's the point. You would you would be in the we rotation. Don't get up, we don't you, really get it monthly. So but I'm I saying you would be in the rotation. So whatever that ends up being, and with the more roads we do, well, it seemed like we, what's the before current it took about thirty minutes. And I think Mike, it took what's a the current days rotation for grading on average? Like eight weeks. Uh, yes, for class one roads, uh, right around six to eight weeks. And then if they end up being class two, that's class they only we would only grade if you called. Nope, that's not entirely true. It's really up to the supervisor on whether or not it needs it. Basically, if it's passable. Right. So it, it does change things. Yeah. Well, it was a lot better, so it lasts longer, too, so I'm just saying. Right, but we, we, we chose to follow what your MSBU was, which was monthly. We, we funded that. that. That's not what it would be when it came in the, county, in the county system. The county system would be, with all the other roads in the county, right. it would be in the rotation which right now is eight weeks, best case. That's if you're class one. Now, if you're class right. two, again, it's subjective to the supervisor. Right. Well, I just made a statement saying it was better from when it was done for over three or four months. Okay. Commissioner Turner. Yeah, the only thing I have is uh, he lives in y'all's subdivision, 
St. John's Harbor? Yeah. Okay, so you heard the conversation that, I'm sorry, thank you. Um, you heard the conversation. If, if y'all want it disbanded, then just get the committee, send us a letter, and I'll promise you I'll make the motion to send out the letter to ask does the other residents in the com in that uh, community want the want it disbanded if they do then i'll make the motion to disband it too okay. but i'm going to ask the people that live there first it's not fair for me to do it with six or eight or ten of you guys that want it that want it disbanded sounds fair okay okay thank you <laughs> next speaker um francis gasson Francis Gass and I live at 169 Bonita Drive and at St. John's Harbor Unit 3. I was just sitting here listening to this and I was, I was trying to make sure about this lot to parcel. I called downtown. They told me that this was set up as a per lot unit and there's no way that it's going to get changed. So it's not right. I live on two lots. I have one driveway. I should only get charged once as a parcel, and that's the way this letter read. It said parcel, it didn't say anything about lots. In the past, I've paid two lots. But when you're talking being on a fixed income, it's kind of hard to keep on coming up with that money. I don't have a problem doing the 238 or a little bit more to, to level it back out, but it's not able to go the other direction. That you're asking as far as I am on the committee and we didn't have a choice in this and what it's going to cost us we didn't see a contract so you say we have authority we don't have any authority Jeff is trying to come out there and help with help us as best he could we need y'all to start helping us <clears throat> Turn this to, from to a dirt to pave. Get it done. Get it over with. Thank you, okay. Commissioner Turner. Okay. Well, num number one, just because you go out of an MSBU, don't think for a minute you're going straight to dirt to pave. That's not how it works. I mean, it's, it, you could get on the list. Now wait a minute. Now I'm not trying to argue with you. We're, that's not how it works that you go straight to it. We've had some subdivisions that have been waiting for 10 or 12 years on the list to try to get in the MSBU type thing. So it doesn't mean you're going to go straight to dirt to pave. I just want you to understand. Well, first of all, I didn't say anything to that nature. Okay. I asked to go from dirt to pave. Yes, sir. Thank okay. You. The other thing would be, Mike, is there any way you can look into that? Because I think the man's correct. I think that it needs to be per parcel. And if it actually reads that it's per lot, but they've joined their lots into one parcel, then we need to talk to the property appraiser about that or, or somebody because, and if it says that in the MSBU, we need to join them up. And if we need to charge an extra dollar per lot per, or per parcel per month in order to let the ones join up that want to, then that's the equitable and fair thing to do, I believe. Now, if you own one across the street, you can't join it with the one on the other side of the street. But if you got three on one side and two on the other, you ought to be able to join them together and get two. But then it would be your decision at that point if you wanted, if that was in your best interest to do that or not. Sometimes you want one of them lots to stay <laughs> separate where you, because you might not be able to split it off later once you join them up. So um, that's another thing that's brought in. <clears throat> but thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner um, Rawls. So just for clarity, you can have multiple lots under a parcel. I, I have it. Um, you can be taxed. You're, you're taxed by the square foot when we're talking about ad valorem assessment. So there's, there's no disadvantage to having three lots in one parcel. When it comes to this, when you've got one house, one driveway on one parcel of land, even though it's three lots, it, it doesn't seem fair that somebody would pay three shares. Or in, in one case, like I said, this one lady said someone's going to have to pay seven. And that's where things start getting, you know, getting um, bad. But I, I really think that <clears throat> what we're looking to agree to here is for 12 months. 
if y'all can if, if, if y'all could give us 12 months i think we can get this thing to where where it needs to be i really think paving is going to be in everybody's best interest um, i think it's something that we need to get the hard numbers on take a look at what the real costs are going to be over uh, a period of time uh, but I, I think first and foremost and, and maybe bill's right maybe we dissolve this this msbu to f if nothing else fix the problem of the parcel versus lot question if in fact it's spelled out that every single lot will be billed separately is that 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 um the one lot that uh I'm pretty sure that could be changed yeah her, her lots are 0 0.06 right. acres right. that's not a lot right that's i mean it it, it just seems ridiculous so I don't know. We're, um, I know. I know the day's getting on, and we need to get out of here. But it, I, I think we owe it to them to um, continue this conversation, at least for this MSBU, and figure out a solution. Okay, Commissioner Harvey. You know, I think we need to be very careful. <clears throat> I've always said this: that the smaller MSBUs probably should have never come into an existence, and I don't mean that ugly. It's just the math doesn't work. And if you start combining lots or or cutting those out then the neighbor down the road is going to pay more money and you're going to pay less. And he's got 100 feet of road and you've got 200 feet of road. I mean, it's, it's not a fair, equitable solution here. And the bigger MSBUs, we don't run across that problem. We've, people have already combined. They've already split. And if somebody does split, they get a new partial number. They get an assessment for it. So it's a very, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't change the numbers. So... But your contract is your contract. So whether you divide it by 444, 449, or 321, it's $106,000. It's not going to change a whole lot. So you're right. We got to start working on trying to find a big solution here, and I think we can find it. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Next um, speaker, Ken Freely. My name is Ken Freely. My address is 102 Brim Drive in Satsuma. Um, I'm in the St. John's Riverside. If you are up to the 302, um, my concern is I, it, I'm getting assessed two lots on a road that's not a road. It's more a cow path. It's called Shadow Drive. It goes for a block. Okay. It's never been touched by the county. It's not improved at all. The easements are, the ditch to the, to the easement is, is covered in brush on both sides of the cow path that runs down the middle of it. It does get driven occasionally by cars, so the center of it, the grass sometimes gets knocked down by the people that live around there. But I have a, I have a parcel on that road that you're going to raise to $302, okay? That there's, I mean, I have a picture of the road if you want to see the picture of the road, but it's just growth all the way through. The very far back end of it, there are two homes on the far end of it on one side of the road, and it has been shell rocked in, but I don't know if they shell rocked, if the county did that or if the people did that. I have no idea. But the rest of the road, there's nobody living on it. Um, my daughter's property backs up to it, or beside it, but it's her property faces traffic, which is a paved road. Um, I'm actually on the next corner over from her. I'm on a dirt road on traffic and the paved road, or the paved road traffic, and uh, my my actual address is Brim Drive, and it's a sand, it's a dirt road. But the road that concerns me is getting my lot that on an unimproved road. I'd like to see, I mean, I don't have problem paying the money. Okay, the, the, the $302, I think that it would have been nice if you had set up the MSBU where it would have been an incremental increase through the years rather than hitting us all at once. <coughs> I'm only going to get charged for the two parcels because all of my lots have been combined. But, uh, you know, on an unimproved, completely unimproved 
dirt path. It's not even a dirt road because there's no dirt seeable. It's all grass. There's actually, towards one end of it, there's trees growing out of the center of the road. Okay. Um, Commissioner Harvey? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Trim. A grass road's not a bad road, I'll tell you that. Kind of beats a dirt road sometimes, but it sounds to me like, it sounds to me like, and I, that the committee didn't do some work in that area. Uh, undoubtedly, they collected some money and didn't, and I don't mean that ugly. I don't know what they did or didn't do, and I think that's something, Mike, I think that's something we need to go take a look at, is some of those roads in there. If I, if I could say because, one more thing. Well, it, hang on just a second, if you don't mind, Mr. Freely. Remember when I first mentioned that we, we shouldn't have eight inch trees growing in the middle of a road when mowing is part of the MSBU. It, it shouldn't happen. I mean, if you, if you, even if you mow once every two years, you ain't gonna get an eight inch tree growing in the middle of the road. So things weren't done and we know that and we're trying to fix that now. And that's what we're looking at. So I think we need to get our public works department out there to look at this. When I called Nilda about it, because I was thinking of putting in a mobile home sure. for, I was told that the county didn't do that kind of work, that whoever put the mobile home in, that developer would have to fix the road. Okay. Well, I don't. Mr. Chairman. I don't know if that was uh, completely accurate or not, but, um, you know, one thing that we need to look at here in, in, the, uh, in that particular subdivision is that I don't think they've ever had 12 mowings, 12 gradings, ditch work ever done in the past in a year. I know that they've had the extra stuff there, but I don't know they've had that amount of work done. So they're if they're going to raise the service that they currently have by charging more, that's different. You can't go by the past. And as far as the, the we should have raised it in increments, if we'd have raised it a little bit at the time over the years, it just meant you would have paid more. Because we're not paying debt with this money. We're paying what it's going to cost from this day forward. I understand that. Okay, I just wanted to make sure no, that I, you I, did. I, I was having... I understand the need to... To, to raise the money. Yes, sir. Okay, everything's gone up. We've lived there, my wife and I have been there 25 years, okay, in our, in our current home. And it's never gone up, okay? Right, and, I'm and aware. And we've gotten decent service from them grading the roads and whatnot. But with the new increase, I just don't see where it's appropriate for the piece of property that's on a road that's never been touched. But you understand that everybody in the subdivision has to pay the same amount for every lot. Yeah. I mean, no, I do. I, mean, I understand. When you get I out, just, yeah, I'd like okay. something done if they're going to do, you know, yes, rather than tell me the, the county doesn't do that kind of stuff and we won't, we won't take care of that. Well, I think there'll be a, there should be a little higher level of service as far as the mowing went and that sort of thing I don't, this time I, around. I, I honestly don't see anything happening to this road because they haven't even looked at it with the, with the graders or anything. They completely just drive past it. May not be included. Can you look into that, Mike? Make sure which MSBU is this? Excuse me? Which MSBU are you in? Uh, St. John's Riverside. It's yeah, uh, it's shadow, shadow Drive. Shadow Drive. Or yeah. Shadow Road. Shadow Road. Yeah, I know it's been graded. Excuse me, Shadow has never been. Okay, sir, 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 please direct it to us, please. I mean, I've lived, I've lived there for 25 years. There's never been a grader on that road. They grade, they grade possibly the far end of it, where the two homes are at, because there is shell rock there. But nothing has ever come down all the way from Tropic, which is where it starts, to the next block back, which is where it ends. Okay. Sides of the road have grown in to where the whole road now is maybe eight foot wide. Okay. All right, they'll, they'll look into that particular, you're gonna look into that, Mike? See if it's yes, we'll uh, follow up with the committee and, and see what's going on out there. All right, all right, sir, thank you. Thank you. And I, uh, in, in for, I didn't know we had an MSBU committee. I will be getting with the lady in the back to get her card and find out when the meetings are. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, James Dandeno. He's gone. I'll follow 
Or we can ask a lady in the back. Which lady in the back? What her too? Who has? Excuse me. Go right ahead. Terry Sorrell. Yes, sir. That's how far we were. We go on here from here. I'm Terry Sorrell. I live at 112 Breezeway Avenue, and I'm the chairman of the committee with no committee people. And that's been like that for I don't know how long because they choose not to have a committee. But when somebody calls Nelda, when somebody calls Nelda, she calls me. I go check the roads. I get back with Nelda or I get with uh, Steve when he was there and we get things taken care of. And if the road he was talking about, if it's the one I'm thinking, there's a partial that has not been graded. It's was narrowed and never was graded, and it is grassed over, if it's the one I'm thinking. But all the other ones out there has been graded once a month, and mowing was done as needed. Ditch cleaning was done as needed, and that was put on. Work orders have been put in for the ditch cleaning since before our last, um, before Steve left. He never did it. So now we're starting all over again. Um, and I am not in favor of the increase, and I was a greater operator for Putnam County Road Department for many years, and the greater operator does not grade the road the way I was trained. He pushes the dirt one end to the other and leaves it in the middle, and you can see the hard pan on one side or the other. He leaves berms on the edge of the road where it's a drop off. That's my complaints. And I am, I'm really wished it wouldn't raise up to $302.88. And I might be like the rest of them and do away, but I can't do it by myself. And if everybody wants to not do it, fine. I have to go along with the people that live out there. But I'm sorry that some of them's been having problems. But so, okay, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner, wait a minute, Carl, don't Ms. Run off yet. Uh, Commissioner Turner. Um, I uh, would would you be interested in trying to get a committee going again in the area now that you've had a couple of different people come to the meeting today? This gentleman right back here that wants to talk to you, he may serve on the committee along okay. with you, along with Miss Tedder. Yes. Um, who you talked She's to already earlier. left. I'm yes, calling her in the morning. Her, yes, so maybe you could form the committee and see if it works that direction. And, okay. Um, but everybody needs to keep in mind that the level of service on these subdivisions that you're getting right now is going to be less, tremendously less, because the county doesn't mow on dirt roads usually. Yeah, we and don't. So, no, they so don't. What, they don't mow dirt roads. But now with this, uh, but we're going to this year as part of this money was be to get oh. four passes a year to get mowing done within your subdivision. Previous to now, they haven't done that in yours. That was part of the cost that made yours go up uh -huh. from the $78 a year to the $302 a year where, where, was where they could uh, offer a higher level of service. Uh -huh. You know, if, if the people in the group decided that they didn't want that level of service. They only wanted it graded once a year, for instance. Or they only wanted leveling blades to go in there every now and then and knock the, the, the washboards down. Or, But they wanted it mowed every month. It's not good to grade the roads when they're so dry. Yes, right. ma'am. I understand. It makes it worse. Or when they're too yet, uh, wet. You can't shove mud. Well, it's a lot easier than shoving the, just moving right. sand I, I back and forth. I understand. And so, but now Tropic Avenue, the county's supposed to maintain that. They don't maintain it. It took me three years to get the ditches cleaned out on Tropic. Yes, ma'am. Well, like I said, drainage and drainage and mowing is part of this deal that mm -hmm. they're coming up with. So I understand that's a long way to go from 78 to 302. Yeah. But by the same token, you as a committee and this gentleman, if he'll join your committee and Miss Tedder, if she'd join a committee, Y'all can come together and decide if you pay it one year, we're, 
our goal is to pay less next year. Uh -huh. So that means you go in and you only use the services you think are absolutely necessary, and then you bring it to next year and say, okay, we don't want to pay 300 anymore. We want to try to use a mowing guy with a, with a, a, uh, with a leveling blade instead of a grader. And the, the once every two to three years that you need the ditches pulled, uh -huh. maybe the county could come in and do that once every two to three years but then you you could have a leveling blade that a mowing, then you're talking about a different contractor, a guy that has lawn mowers and a, and a tractor instead of somebody that has to buy million dollars worth of graders right. and, and bulldozers and things to do that work. So you're just talking a whole different ball game here. Uh -huh. It may be that you could do that if you could possibly stand for the one year at 300 and then you'd find, I so know. That would be one year at at, at that price for hopefully one year and then it drops back down? Well, it could. It if, could. If you decided as a committee that you wanted less services. Mm -hmm. In other words, you don't want it mowed four times a year. You only want it mowed twice a year. Or you want different levels of service and they could bid out that level of service for you next year uh -huh. and, and then it would come down to what that level of service would cost. What I can't promise you is is that it will come down. And the reason that is, is because if you look at fuel, this stuff that we're talking about right now was bid out in the, in the fall of last year. Yeah. Well, back then, diesel fuel was, what, $3 a gallon, and now it's $6 a gallon? I don't know that you're going to be able to get a lot of these services done next year for what the prices are that we have now. Well, when we, this started, we were told back, I think it was 99 98 somewhere, $78 was for life. For It was never going to change. Well, and, and it could still be for life, but you wouldn't get anything done. We'd go in there and then do nothing because for but, the 78, you know, we can't do anything. Yeah. So what you do is you reduce services to match your funds. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, the MSBUs have not wanted to reduce their services. They wanted to maintain or up their oh, services. I'm, Personally, I would be willing to reduce services to put the service on something else. Well, that's what we need from the committee, is we need, if you'd form you another committee with members, if this gentleman here would get on, Ms. Tedder, or mm -hmm. whoever else you want on there that's interested, bring recommendations from the committee, and we'll see what we can do to help you out as far as, you know, do less services than what we've asked for, or, or try to use different types of equipment instead of graders, or... There's a lot of different options that can be done, but that needs to be generated by your committee if possible. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, Mr. Commissioner Rawls. I, I, in listening to this, it sounds like the problem is that um, at certain times you, you want stuff done and at certain times you don't. There's different levels of service, um, different levels of expectation. I think it almost seems like we need the committees to write a... Uh, a scope of work or a level of expectation on an annual basis or on a, um, every, every two or three year basis. So we, we know how to respond to them. I think that's maybe where some of the communication has not been had. Um, you know, we're, I'm getting an education right now. It's the first time we've ever had this since I've been elected and on probably most of y'all as well. Miss Sorrell, are you fixing to leave? I want to give you my business card no. before you walk out the door, um, if I may. I'm sorry, Commissioner. That's all right. I, I just, I, I think that's probably uh, the biggest thing that's missing is that this has been left to staff to deal with um, over the years, and the, and the, there's not been a lot of support on both sides. We, I think, we we owe it to the citizens to have them in here at least once or every two or three years and discuss what the next two or three years looks like for their MSVU. So there's no surprises. Um, and Turner's correct. <laughs> you, you can all bets are off. Lime Rock, if you can get aggregate, if you can if you can get equipment out there, and you know they're, they're listening this morning talking about roads are prime, waiting for pavement to come in September. You know this is um, this is a world we live in. So I, I think that we need to uh, um, address the expectations and, and make sure that we control that <coughs> because uh, what what looks good on paper today may not be viable a year from now. So. Um, I think this whole thing is very fluid, to say the least. Okay. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Sorrell, thank you very much for your service to the MSBU. I know how lonely it is to be the only one in the MSBU. It's not fair. 
and it's really not fair when you have 9,500 lot owners and you have one person. It's not fair to that person. And, and people do a good job at it. But now what I said earlier, this exercise has brought everybody out. Nobody, not, nobody can sit there and go, I didn't know a thing about the MSBU. You got a letter. And now you got to respond to it. And now is the time when citizens can start joining up with you, forming their committee. And as Commissioner Turner said, you, go, you come back to us and go, we don't want this anymore. We want this. We don't want that. Let's work out a deal. Not every round hole is going to have the round peg that's going to fit in it. We know that. And again, West Putnam, you've, if you graded roads in Putnam County, you know what I'm talking about. It's a mess out there. And it's, it's terrible, but there's solutions here. And it, one size doesn't fit all. So I want to thank you for all the years of you sitting up late at night, worried about the money, going out and looking at the roads. It's not fair for you to have to do that on your own. So thank you. <laughs> we'll get with these people right here. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> they'll, hire, they'll buy you a grader right now. <laughs> okay, next speaker, Patrick Flanagan. Thank goodness. I felt, I felt, I have felt bad for you. It's like, it's okay, I'll be late next time. Okay, I'm not Patrick Flanagan. I'm Laura Holland, the mother of Patrick Flanagan, who couldn't get out of work today. He only has six lots, three on the road, I misspoke, I'm sorry. two behind, and then he bought one on one, the little road that's not even considered a road. What's he going to have to pay this on, the fee on? All six? Two of them don't even touch the road. Yeah. I, th I think we have a problem with the MSV out there, to be honest with you. It's like, where's that one? He has three, he gets three tax letters. Which MSBU is it? Is uh, the the St. John. St. John's Harbor. His, his address is 150. It's the, the platted lots is what I understand it to be. But they don't touch the road, two of them. So he's got to pay for six. He's got to pay by the platted lot. That how he's assessed. Okay, what's a platted lot? This is where I'm getting confused. He gets three tax letters to pay. I'd have to look at the the plat of the neighborhood development to show you that. Hey, can you look into that and get yes? Can I get your information? And you get. Um, I mean, he's a young man who this is his first piece. You know, the house burnt down right after he finished cleaning all the hoarding stuff out, and he's trying to save up money so he can build. And if he has to pay this, there's no way. Okay, can you give and Laura your? Nobody mows in front of his house or in front of mine except us. Okay, and no offense, I don't need you to grade my road. From my house all the way out to onto Bowfin, onto Palmetto Bluff, we don't get the bumps. It's the other way that does. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, that's a heck of a jump. Yeah, it is. You know, and everybody that stands up here and says they're willing to pay the amount, I'm a widow, and that is going to hurt when I have to pay that extra. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And I understand everything's got to go up. Believe me, I do. I can't go to dental appointments at the University of Florida because of fuel. And it just, it's a lot. Maybe for some people it isn't, but for me it is. Okay. Commissioner Rawls. So, you know, Larry said a while ago, somebody's going to pay more, someone's going to pay less if this right. adjusts out. So the, 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 the truth is, is, you're looking at a probably an average of $330 instead of $238. Um, and I, I think that's probably more equitable. So whether somebody has um, one, one parcel or 10 parcels, if they have one driveway and one vehicle, they're no more of an impact than the person that has another driveway and a vehicle. Um, that's really what impacts the roads is the number of vehicles on the roads, not the number of lots you own. So I think we've got to get that straightened out. Yeah, because I mean, sooner than later. It, it, it's like, Three of those sh are already put together, as far as I know. I mean, when he bought them, they were. And then the other two that t don't touch the road are together, and then the one's a separate one. So that's where I'm confused. I'll do that. Yes. Okay. Well, okay. Commissioner Turner. But that's not the way it works. That's right. 
the way it works is that everybody that owns a parcel in a place has to participate. Mm -hmm. If you have three parcels that, that are together, or three lots that are together, I think you can join them and make them into one lot or whatever, so there are some ways to go. But if you got five separate lots in a subdivision, you've got to participate or the whole MSBU just went out right out the window. Well, Mr. Turner, these all do touch. Okay. But then I think you have the option to go in and join them all up and make them one parcel and only have one deal, I believe. Can he that's, do this before correct. the there. tax bill comes out? Administrator Suggs? I, I don't know what the time frame is, but we'll, that's one of the questions that we probably need to reach out to Mr. Parker's office to, to, to get an answer to. I'd hate to give bad advice today, would, you know, on Mr. Parker's behalf, but we can certainly look into that. You know, he knows he has to pay his for, fair thing, but can, can he combine them? Yes, par parcel uh, consolidation is an option. Okay, so just contact the property appraiser's yes, office? I actually, yes, I have a copy of it here as well, but yes, he, he can contact the Putnam County property appraiser. Okay. We're walking through that process. Okay. And next time I'm coming in late. <laughs> so I'm the first one up here. Thank you for your time. Thank I you. really appreciate it. Thank you. We only have a few more. We're going to take a three minute break and come back and finish these up. Okay.
I'm going to go ahead and reconvene the uh, Board of County Commissioner's Workshop, and we'll uh, move down to our next speaker, um, Laura Holland. Is Laura Holland here? Ted Burke. Is Ted Burke here? Anita Welch. My name is Anita Welch. I live at 108 New York Avenue out in Interlochen. Mr. Harvey is probably uh, recognizing my face. Uh, we met last year when um, I relocated back here um, after living away for about 10 years. And where I live out on New York Avenue, I am not on an MSBU. But Flamingo Boulevard, which is the road I access my property through, is. So my question actually is, I don't have a say about the MSBU because I, I can't go to the meetings because I'm not paying those fees. But my concern is that that road does not get properly maintained, um, even though, you know, it's probably at least once every eight weeks, if not more, it does get um, graded um, just due to the fact that it's a heavily trafficked road in general. So my concern though for my road is there's two houses on New York Avenue, me and my next door neighbor. And if we don't call, we don't get any kind of service out there on a regular basis. There's lots out there that go all the way up New York to 315, all the way, all the way around the bend. But, you know, th these are all vacant landowners who don't even live in the area and don't really care about the property in general. They don't maintain them. They don't do anything with them in general. Actually, one of the lots is actually owned by the county also. So just for the record. Um, so I've called, I've recently had them back out again because I have a major drainage issue that when it, we get a, a rain, it comes down the road and comes all the way up to my garage door and to my front porch. I am now in the process of trying to repair it on my property as best I can, but I'm still at the mercy of the county when it comes to the road being maintained. So, um, if I had any say in an MSBU situation, I would vote it down at this point. I don't see the benefit that it's having. Um, for people who are like me, and I'm sure there's plenty others out there that are caught in between, where there's an MSB road that they do use, but their road is not an MSBU road. So what do you, how do you address all those people? Um, and how many of those roads out there are like that? How many of them, has anybody ever really gone out there to see what the comparison is as to how many people wind up being on an MSBU road, but they're actually on a county maintained road? Because the communication that I'm hearing is part of the problem, and then the funds is the second part of the problem. So it's, you know, really, is it really benefiting the county in general? And I've been here almost 15 years on and off. I moved here in 2005. We didn't call the county about the roads. We didn't know how to get in touch with who needed to handle the scenario with the roads. You know, we didn't really know all that stuff when we moved here from South Florida. So it's been a learning process. Um, but I've spoke with Larry and he informed me of a lot of good information and who to get a hold of so that I could start making phone calls. And they've been recently out at my road and they have put in a ditch that became non-existent on my road somehow. <laughs> it just disappeared. Um, so they redid a ditch. They put down some more, um, you know, uh, surface, you know, to hopefully keep the road a little bit better. But I suspect that with heavy rains that in less than a year, I'm going to be at, at box one again. That with the road being used by the ATVs, the people who don't live on the road, that come racing down the road anyway, um, 
the trucks that have to come down the road for whatever reason, delivery or you know garbage pickup, that eventually that it's going to move the road again. It's not going to be angled right for the drainage, and I'll be back to calling and asking them to come out again and spend more money putting something down on the road that's not solving the problem. So, but I just wanted to just find out though, really how many people are not on an MSBU, but they need that road. They need that road. They don't have any say, they don't pay any of those fees, but that's how they get, you know, to the hard top roads. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Harvey. Well, you are in the highest spot in Putnam County and you have a little pond behind the house mm -hmm. and all that water is trying to go down the hill. And it's always been trying to go down the hill. It's always went down the hill. Um, that is a county road in front of your house. You can't access it from 315. If it was better, it's not better. I know that. I tried to go down it the other day when I was down there. Your point about the with the MSBU, you wouldn't vote for an MSBU. I can tell you 38 years ago, 40 years ago, and even as a little boy going out there, you wouldn't have wanted to drive on any of those roads out there. So the MSBU had a purpose. Um, unfortunately, Florida Gas tore up a lot, not Florida Gas, the pipeline people tore up a lot of that road. We had it fixed three or four times, charged them for doing that out there. Uh, but you saw the mess that was in. It was terrible out there. So there is no, again, no good dirt road, and you're trying to go up a hill or down a hill. One or the other is going to happen. And it's just not, we can do a little bit of work, but you can't even hardly grade it. We tried to get a grader out there, and that was a disaster. I mean, it was, um, it was really bad. So bear with us. I, Mike's taking notes over here. Mike Nimitz is. So it is a county maintained road. It can come off of 315. That would be your best route if you didn't have to go down the hill so fast, but or try to climb up the hill. I yeah, can but, slide through the sugar sand coming down, I know, I know. <laughs> and I do it. I but know. in one of our vehicles, I can't because it's too low profile, and so that car is not meant to even venture down that road. I but I did want to also ask: When is 315 slated to well, be um, yeah. resurfaced? Well, it's on our five-year plan, and it's on. You actually saw them out there uh, surveying. Mm -hmm. They have the stakes along 315. But I don't want to give you false hope. Um, we got a letter the other day. We've got lime rock on roads with tar on them, and we can't get asphalt from the asphalt plants until September, possibly then. So I don't know how. I was in Tampa with DOT not just two weeks ago having that same conversation about rural Florida and Putnam County, and they're wanting to get their roads asphalted. DOT is paying for 315 from 100 to 20 but I don't know where they're gonna get the asphalt. So I said, look, we gotta to come to some agreement here. You can't take all the asphalt for all your project. We need projects too that we've got in the ground right now. So it's, it's, it's gonna be very, the supply chain has stopped on asphalt right now. And it's, so to answer your question, I don't know when 315 will be resurfaced. I'll tell you that point blank. Okay, so. They can't get out there. They can only use like 30 to 40% of the mix to go back into the road. Mm -hmm. so they still got to buy 60 to 70 percent of fresh asphalt. Where does the county stand on if me and my neighbor wanted to get together and pay for millings to be dropped on our road? Michael, you can get with Public Works. <coughs> okay. Yeah, we because have because that's we have our permits. next as long option. As it's up to standard. We have permits that, that'll do it. Okay. I can help you with that. Yep. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Rawls. All right. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. And ladies. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Douglas, you want to talk on the MSBU? Okay. My name is Douglas Hayes. I live at 216 Huron Avenue. Don't really have a dog in the fight, but I have been watching, and it seems to me the uh, biggest complaint is what they've been spending, they're not getting a return. The maintenance. Uh, the second thing is that the drainage aspect, you, there's two topics. You've got the maintenance and then these ditches that have become overwhelmed or whatever. You just got an appropriations 
in regards to addressing some of the main uh, drainage issues? Is there a way to filter some of that money to that problem? The other possibility is to look for grants to address that because I have noticed as I've been grant hunting that there's um, both at federal and state level, um, there's a lot of funding available for roadway and drainage and that kind of thing. So maybe there'd be a grant available before you start imposing such an increase. And the other part where I'm at a loss is that um, you're, the folks are contracted for service, but then you subcontract that out. Is that how that is working? When they're paying the extra MSBU, is that to pay the county to do additional no, service, or you farm that private, out to somebody? Private contractors. Okay. That's probably why the costs increase. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Douglas. Moral of the story is approach the grant idea and your appropriation money. Okay. Thank you, Douglas. Okay. Any more public comment? Okay. We're going to close the public comment portion. And commissioners? Start with Commissioner <coughs> Deliberation, Commissioner Adams Act. Yeah. I think we do have to consider the wording, at least in that MSBU, as far as potentially getting a repricing based on parcel. Is that how would we do that? Would, and I guess the attorney's not here today. Would we have to make a motion to change it from lot to parcel? Is that even possible? Is it? Mr. Uh, Commissioner, Mr. Chairman, I. Uh, I was, Douglas, Douglas, if y'all want to have a conversation, y'all go out in the lobby, please. We need to pass the resolutions as put forth today as we as, as we're here because I believe we're at a timeline now to where we don't have any other issue. We gotta we gotta pass this thing so we can get them on the uh, uh, uniform method of collection. If we want to come back and address them, uh, as you folks have said uh, in the future, that would be that would be the option that I would say that we probably need to follow. I guess I'll say this then as an announcement. It sounds like we have people here that are willing to do that in the next year. We don't have the time to figure that out. We didn't really realize that the lot and parcel thing was that impacting to anyone. Um, I guess locally, some of us might have, but um, it sounds like something we can remediate potentially in the future and look into. So I'd like to at least look into what we're allowed to do with that after we pass this or do whatever we can do here today. Okay. Commissioner Thanks. Rawls. What if we were to table um, St. John's Harbor until Friday get and have a special call a special meeting either later this week or early next week to um, get some clarity before we move this thing forward? Uh, well, I know that would be an attorney question. But how, how it is, how much time and the attorney we, is how, not, not even in country right now, and he knew, and, and we all knew this, so... Uh, I don't. I don't know if moving the meeting to, to Friday is going to make a, make a difference if we have our attorney back or not. But I do know that we're under a timeline to get these things approved so we can get them on the on the uniform method of collection. What is the absolute drop deadline for us to make a decision? We're at it. This is it. We so if it slips if it slips beyond today, that's it. That's what I understood. Correct. Yes, that's correct. We don't have one extra day. <clears throat> Well, it's the, the month of June. This is it, the June hearing. Well, so. you know, right. all we're Wait passing a is the uniform method. We right. Can, we can come back and revisit. Negotiate for something I'm not willing to do, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I think that's running down a dead end street. Okay. All right, Commissioner Harvey. I think we need to be mindful. Uh, the lot splits and all that's one thing, but we're not increasing any MSBU. The numbers of the lots or the units have not changed from five years. Well, I don't want to go there, but they could be because someone sold or split or whatever. But the basic concept is a concept. So if someone's paying three assessments right now, I, I can't imagine they're going to pay six assessments or nine. It's the numbers are the numbers. Yeah. So all we're passing is a uniform method of collection to get these things back on track to where they need to be. Thank you. Mr. Turner. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if se several things, can y'all hear me with this new microphone they yeah. gave me? Um, several things 
Number one is, is that I think we can move this thing forward today. That doesn't mean we can't continue talking about these different issues. <clears throat> we can talk about your, I agree with you, we need to talk about that issue. Uh, we need to talk about other issues, but just because we move this resolution forward doesn't mean that we can't continue talking about these issues. Uh, nothing to say whatsoever. Um, I think that most all of the issues that are hand right now, I think this meeting today has been a great exercise in, in a lot of the people learning, even MSBU committees learning some of the things that they could do. Um, if, they, if some of them that aren't as active as y'all are um, come forward now, maybe they can come up with some recommendations and say, we don't want this or we don't want that. This is a starting point to get us moving forward we can go back to giving them some semblance of a level of, of a service in these subdivisions that we just can't give them today because we don't have the money. So I would like to, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that we move this forward, this resolution forward. Well, there's a, <coughs> there's, a, there's a, like seven of them, right? Excuse me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Can you just start reading on them for me, please? Yes, sir. Resolution. Uh, resolution 22-056, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Putnam County, Florida, ordering the continued acquisition of materials and services for the maintenance of unpaved roads and aperture drainage in the Interlock and State Lake Estates 2 Municipal Service Benefit Unit, approving an assessment role for such project, imposing a special assessment, and establishing the lien thereof in regard to the project, confirming with amendments to the resolution 9775, of which the board relating to such project, directing the provisions of the maintenance services, and providing an effective date. May I ask would the board like to do these one at the time or just go ahead and read them and do them all at once? Well, you should probably do them one at a time, but so um, move. that one's done. Um, I need a second. I'll get a second. We need oh, a second. Okay, he's made a We're going to vote on each one of these, correct? Yes, okay, so we got a proper motion of, to move forward 22056, correct? Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Present. Commissioner Rawls second it. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor of the case saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Would you like me to read the next one? Yes, sir. Resolution number 22, 2022-057, final assessment resolution, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Putnam County, Florida, ordering the continued acquisition of materials and services for the maintenance of unpaved roads and aperture drainage in the Interlock and Lake Estates Municipal Service Benefit Unit, approving an assessment role for such project, imposing special assessments, and establishing the lien thereof in regard to the project, confirming with amendments to Resolution 9943 of the Board relating to such project, directing the provisions of the maintenance services, and providing an effective date. So moved. Second. We got a proper motion by Commissioner Turner and a proper second by Commissioner Adams Act to approve 22057. Any further discussion? No. Seeing none, all in favor, kind of saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, next. Resolution 2022-055, final assessment resolution, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Putnam County, Florida, ordering the continued acquisition of materials and services for the maintenance of unpaved roads and aperture drainage in the Interlochen Boulevard Municipal Service Benefit Unit, approving an assessment role for such project, imposing special assessments, and establishing the lien thereof in regard to the project, confirming with amendments resolution 2001-16 of the board relating to such project, directing the provisions of the maintenance services and providing an effective date. Second. A proper motion by Commissioner Turner, proper second by Commissioner Adams Act. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, okay, saying aye. 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 Same sign. Resolution number 2022-054, final assessment resolution, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Putnam County, Florida, ordering the continued <coughs> acquisition of materials and services for the maintenance of unpaved roads and aperture drainage in the Interlock and Lake Estates 19 Municipal Service Benefit Unit, approving an assessment role for such project imposing, imposing special assessments and establishing the lien thereof in regard to the project, confirming with amendments resolution 99-44 of the board relating to such project, directing the provisions of the maintenance service and providing an effective date. Move, move. Second. Proper motion by Commissioner Turner, proper second by <coughs> Commissioner Adams Act. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, it comes saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. 
Resolution 2022-058, Final Assessment Resolution, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Putnam County, Florida, ordering the continued acquisition of materials and services for the maintenance of unpaved roads and aperture drainage in the Lakeside Oaks MSBU Municipal Service Benefit Unit, approving an assessment role for such project, imposing special assessments and establishing the lien thereof in regard to the project, confirming the amendments to Resolution 97-90 of the Board relating to such project, directing the provisions of the maintenance services, and providing an effective date. Second. A proper motion by Commissioner Turner, proper second by Commissioner Adamzak. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, okay, seeing aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Resolution number 2022-059, final assessment resolution, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Putnam County, Florida, ordering the continued acquisition of materials and services for the maintenance of unpaved roads and aperture drainage in the Moores Trail Buppy Lane Municipal Service Benefit Unit, approving an assessment role for such project and Imposing special assessment and establishing the lien thereof in regard to the project, confirming the with amendments resolution number 9858 of the board relating to such project, directing the provisions of the maintenance services and providing an effective date. So moved. Second. Proper motion by Commissioner Adamzak, proper second by Commissioner <coughs> Turner. I, I do have one question on this one. Commissioner Adamzak. Um, for Moore's Trail, because they do plan to put out a letter to go to, to do a paving MSBU. If they did get it approved, would would that, well, I guess it wouldn't happen in this fiscal year probably anyway. Right. But So I guess that doesn't matter. But let's say it did happen in the middle of a fiscal year. Would that money then shift to the, the paving MSBU, anything that was in their pot? Because I think they asked us that question. Yeah, their dollars don't disappear. It would be for a project specific. So whatever they had then in reserves would then convert to a project that they'd like to do paving and or otherwise. Thank you. Yes, sir. And, and that would apply to anyone that would do that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, proper motion, <coughs> proper second. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, kind of saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Resolution number 2022-060, final assessment resolution, a resolution by the, of the Board of County Commissioners of Putnam County, Florida, ordering the continued acquisition of materials and services for the maintenance of unpaved roads and aperture drainage in the Ocklawaha Hills Municipal Service Benefit Unit, approving an assessment role for such project, imposing special assessments and establishing the lien thereof in regard to the project, confirming with amendments resolution number 94-95 of the Board relating to such project, directing the provisions of the maintenance services and providing an effect Date. So moved. Second. Proper motion by Commissioner Adamzak. Proper second by Commissioner Turner. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor indicate saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Today, resolution number 22-061, final assessment resolution, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Putnam County, Florida, ordering the continued acquisition of materials and services for the maintenance of unpaved roads and aperture drainage in the St. John's Harbor Unit 3 MSBU Municipal Service Benefit Unit, approving an assessment role for such project, imposing special assessments and establishing the lien there of in regard to the project, confirming with amendments resolution 96-89 of the board relating to such project, directing the provisions of the maintenance services and providing an effective date. Move approval. So you got a proper motion by Commissioner Turner. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Adams. I had a question. Okay, Commissioner Rawls. All right, so if, if we pass this in this form, are you, are you saying that there's an opportunity to come back between now and uh, next year when the contract is up and, um, because we're fixing to send this out to the property appraiser oh. to notify folks. Rate. Only the resolution. Right. So what, what I'm, I'm saying is for is the, the uh, way we collect it per parcel per lot question. That is being established today as it is written. So is it, it is will it, be by lot for that particular <clears throat> MSBU as we've discussed. Nothing that says we can't address this though it anywhere along the way. I mean, I know that we need to send this forward to have this done and then get in line and get it on the tax roll and get all that stuff done. But there's nothing that says we can't have a meeting somewhere that says, okay, we're going to assess this by parcel instead of by lot. It may drop the amount of money they have in their MSBU down if there's less people paying it. But I'm just saying that there's nothing that says we can't address it again. Well, but will it be addressed in... The tax year 22-23, or will it be addressed in 23-24? I couldn't tell you that, sir. 24. <clears throat> I don't, you know, I, I think there, we're, you know, I understand our, our back is up against the wall from a timeline perspective, but um, 
there's there's a lot of money in, in in some people's cases where they're looking at paying four or five or six shares at 240 bucks a pop. Um, you know, it doesn't make sense to me that we can't do anything right now to modify the resolution, if if need be, to say per parcel versus per lot. Can we kind of modify the motion to say that? I don't believe you can. Yeah. And, <coughs> and Mr. Chairman, nothing has changed from year to year on how we do this. So whatever whatever the resolution that was passed last year compared to the resolution passed this year is the same. It's, only thing changing is the numbers that are associated with each one. We haven't changed anything else in the language. So if they, but if today, they paid to, two think, assessments last year, they would pay two assessments this year. It just would be a theory, yes, assessment. They last pay year they three, were paying five. 60 okay. bucks for two assessments. This year they're paying almost $500 for yeah. two assessments. But it's still <laughs> the same amount of parcels that were associated I, with, I, with, with I, the resolution. I totally get it, but it's, it's we're having two completely different conversations. So I'd like to stay on the one that says we're looking at equity here. Um, so, for clarity, we cannot modify this resolution from the dais right now and the way that the uh, taxes are collected within the MSVU? The I do not believe you may. There's I believe it. I would, I would argue, I would think that the, the have folks have that have three votes to do that are, that are, to. That, are mul that are paying multiples, are, this is part of their, their heartburn with this. Sir, <clears throat> Chairman. I believe that within the provision of each one of these MSVUs, there is an opportunity for relief for a citizen who may have multiple lots. They may seek that. My understanding in, in briefly reading, and I am not your legal counsel, but in briefly reading the resolutions, is that I believe they may seek that relief up into December 31st. So if you have a unique citizen who has multiple parcels, they need to contact Public Works and go through the process to determine if they want to attempt to obtain relief by consolidation of lots, not parcels. Okay. What, where, where are you finding this? So I can show Provisions you. for relief start in section seven. And I had moved on, so it may be section. This says, <clears throat> um, owner record must must be the same for all parcels be consolidated parcels must be adjacent I'm still confused when when a person gets one bill but they're billed in that bill for multiple lots um, because this is taught parcel so um, oh man this is a tough one Mr. Harvey, yeah. while he's thinking. All right, let me clarify. The number of lots aren't changing here. Nothing's going to change there. Everything's the same. The price is going to change, maybe. And what I mean by that is all we're doing tonight is passing the resolution. We can still come up. What's our de drop date? I wish Nilda was here, but our drop date on the, the, part, on the cost is a few months down the road, if not mistaken. We don't give that to the property appraiser today. The rate adjustment, you know, no, the rate adjustment has to be approved by the BOCC in September yeah. to meet our so, deadline for the, so the tax certification. So if you have an alternative situation that you want to bring up, you bring it up, and that that number can change. That that's a simple process, right? Well, what, I, what I would what I would be proposing would be changing the way we collect the, the money. Yeah, and, and I don't think we done? we can't. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think we should even go down that road without our attorney here. And I don't think I don't think it's going to matter because we're not increasing lots here. It's the same thing. Now, if you want to if you want a drop level of service and you want to do all that, then we can change the price on that. That that's an easy one, and we don't have to have that done until later on. Thank you, Administrator Sobs. Sure. Administrator Sobs, you have a comment? That's a question that I would like to have the opportunity to research just to make sure that we're all on the same page and uh, we'll get that information and get it back out to five to all five elected officials. Thank you. Okay, we got a proper motion and proper second. Um, no further discussion. All in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Okay. Commissioner Rawls is sending. Okay, next one. 
Resolution number 2022-062, final assessment resolution, a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners of Putnam County, Florida, ordering the continued acquisition of materials and services for the maintenance of unpaved roads and aperture drainage in the St. John's River Side Estates River Ridge MSBU Municipal Service Benefit Unit, approving an assessment role for such project, imposing a special assessment, and establishing the lien thereof in regard to the project, confirming with amendments Resolution 98-74 of the Board relating to such project, directing the provisions of the maintenance services, and providing an effective date. So moved. Proper motion by Commissioner Adams Act. Second. Proper second by Commissioner Turner. Any further discussion? Okay. I just want to clarify the same thing on the other one because I think that lady is going to go back with those other people in her committee and try to have a committee meeting probably before September. So if from that committee meeting they come back and they say they want less services, the price could potentially change. And I think the same applies to the last one we did as well, I really correct? I don't think that's going to happen. It, it may not. I just want to make sure because there's I've some people I think that never talked to her before. Before today I've heard yeah. from two people. Right. Oh, really? heard from two people and so on that gotcha. whole subdivision right. three, three of them came in here today hopefully i've got the three of them on the committee and <laughs> right. they can all get together I and doubt. talk but i believe that their biggest problem was taxation without representation now the ones that were concerned about that go get to serve on the committee they're represented i'd be willing to bet the chairman's gavel you notice on your stuff uh, the chairman's gavel right here that uh <laughs> that they go on and pay the $300 a year and try to get a better level of service. It's better than betting a greater out of district one. I just wanted to make sure I, I understood but, that it is possible. Okay. That's but I just want to be real clear. I want to be real careful here because I don't want to speak uh, with Mr. Commando not here. I don't want the folks out there to believe that we're going to have an option of lowering these fees until we absolutely make sure that right. that's a viable option. Sure. Sure. Okay. I agree. Good, good, good comment. Okay, we've got a proper motion, a proper second. All in favor, and case saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Is that all of them? One more. I mm -hmm. thought one more. Resolution number 2022-063, final assessment resolution, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Putnam County, Florida, ordering the continued acquisition of materials and services for the maintenance of unpaved road and aperture and drainage in the West Putnam MSBU Municipal Service Benefit Unit, approving an assessment role for such project, imposing special assessments, and establishing the lien thereof in regard to the project, confirming with amendments the resolution number 20. 03-98 of the board relating to such project, directing the provisions of the maintenance services and providing an effective date. So moved. Second. Proper motion by Commissioner Adams Act. Proper second by Commissioner Turner. Any further discussion? All in favor and saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That is all of them, correct? That's it. We can begin workshop now. Did I miss okay. One? okay. All right, thank you. Um, Okay, we'll move into public comment on agenda items. Anybody wishing to make public comment on the agenda items that we have for the transportation? Okay. Um, <coughs> down. Uh, can I ask this question? Are they waiting for the last one? Yeah. Could y'all mind if we just go ahead and move this one down? Good. We're gonna no we're gonna go down to Public Works, the sale of the deed portion of Second Street and Melrose. If I didn't mess y'all up, Mike, Mike and Mike. Mr. Pardon Chairman, me? I move approval of the. Okay. Sale of the deed of portion of Second Street in Melrose. Second. Okay, I, will, I have a question or two before we. Okay. But I'm okay with it. I didn't have a question or two. Okay. Okay, so isn't this the piece of property that we actually bought something to tie in that? No. That piece to the road, or was that a different one? There's a little triangle right there. Didn't we either buy it or was going to buy it or something? We had, at, there's about 10 feet from. Um, the hard road in that we had to buy to the corner of their fence line. Mm -hmm. We're not buying. We're not vacating that. That's going to still sit there. But we're if just we vacate the 20. Don't people drive on no, the No, they don't. No, they come. The they come up and go out. They don't drive in front because we closed it off and built a cul-de-sac okay. at the other end. So from her fence line to the east to that cul-de-sac, no one drives. <clears throat> it's not drivable. Okay, I'm good with all yep. that. I just want. I just didn't want to. I, I thought we bought some property up there we had in the to buy corner if we eight did. Eight to ten feet, it wasn't But that much. wasn't to get to this 25 no. feet right away. It was to get to a different road. It was to get to the road that goes, the one that goes north and south on the west side of these yes. properties. Yes, Okay, I, I just remembered us talking about <laughs> yeah. this and couldn't quite understand. That's right. Okay, I'm we actually good. good. Are we actually That's selling good. this property or we're just vacating? We're selling it. Huh? We're selling it. 
Okay. Well, there's a whole thing they got to go get it appraised. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. landowners got to be talked to and what have you. So basically, we're going to vacate today and then allow them to go through the motions, correct? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, is that what the motion is? It is. Okay. <laughs> that's what I'm the newsy acting attorney today. <laughs> I'm looking over this way. I know. <laughs> did you, the, did you say acting attorney? They, attorney yeah. they, they, public Works is re recommending the board provide Public Works with a concurrence to move forward with the process to sell the piece of property owned pursuant to Florida Statute 125.35. Yeah. But if I read it in there, it also had a certain way they had to do it, which is they notify the other landowner adjacent and if both of them want to buy it, then they got to it, submit a bid. If only one Sealed of them bid. want to buy it, they got to submit a at a pre. I mean, it's not just here. Give me ten bucks. Right. I mean, um, they got to go through a process. So I believe that what they, but Public Works and Legal Counsel, I believe our Legal Counsel reached the agreement, and as it states in here, is that it's the opinion of the Public Works that based upon the above, the portion of Second Street as described in Exhibit A is owned by Putnam County and therefore qualifies to be sold pursuant to Florida Statute 125.35, which provides that the board is authorized to sale, sell the real and personal property if the property is of insufficient size and shape to be issued a permit, or if the value of the property is $15,000 or less, and it is determined that the property is only to use of one or more adjacent property owners. So I believe the, the statute that they're um, acting on allows for the sale directly to the adjacent, adjacent property owner. Call for question. Okay, you got a proper motion or a proper second. All in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and knock. You had to wait all afternoon for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Been a long time coming. Though. Okay, we'll move to item B. We'll just go up the up the ladder. Um, countywide guardrail project uh, recommendation <laughs> award of bid um, and budget discussion. Could I just ask a question? Yeah. Okay. The way I see this, after reading it in the packet, is we got two options. We either we've got 133,000 in the budget, and it came in at 288 to do everything. I can't sit here and pick which ones need to get done because I haven't went and looked at every one of them. So are every one of these projects absolutely critical at this time or would some hold off until next year and not be too terribly bad? I mean, I know that's hard to ask, Mike, and I'm not trying not to put you on the spot, but before I fall on this sword and try to get the funding to do the whole 288 or another additional 150,000 a year in funding, I'd kind of like somebody to assure me that if these are absolutely necessary to be done this year, in your opinion, if they are, then, I, then I'll move forward with you. But if we can put half of them off till next year, then I don't want to do, I don't want to fund all of them this year, if that makes sense. That's just me speaking. Yes, I understand. Um, I have made some recommendations just based on the um, annual average daily traffic. Um, so I can share those recommendations with you if, if you'd prefer. Um, but a lot of these have been in the same shape for a while. So I would, I would say that the sooner we can address them, you know, the better. So I don't... Oh, yeah, and Project Area 6... Um, there was an insurance check collected for that one, but it was it did not cover all of this amount. I believe it was around five five thousand dollars for that one. And if we can show the insurance company that it costs more to repair it, um, then there's a possibility we can get additional funds for that one. So project area six um, was a recommendation. Uh, project area seven and three. And that would be based off average annual daily traffic and trying to like split it up across the county. Um, project areas one, two, and three had the highest average annual daily traffic of about 3,300. Project area four is about 1,000. Project area 5,000. Project area six was 1,800. And project area seven was 2,800. Yes, so if you want to prioritize it based on how much traffic is passing the guardrails, um, that's one way, but there's, I guess there's multiple ways to prioritize. Uh, You're just confusing the hell out of me. <clears throat> so basically, is it your suggestion that we 
do items seven, six, and three? Is it your suggestion that we, what is, that we try to do, so what is your suggest? do them all? What is your suggestion, Mike? Can some of them wait till next year, you think? They've been there for a little while already. What do you think? I hate to put you on the spot. You're going to be mad at me now, aren't you? Um, the, the reason why it's a tough question is because, you know, if someone does run into it and, and this, you know, this is a public meeting and they find that we decided not to, um, it's just a liability. I mean, that's, I mean, so that's one reason why it would be a priority to address them all, but. We have liabilities everywhere. Well, yeah, in the room place. now. Yeah, I know, everywhere right? Everywhere right now, so. Okay. You know, we also have a limited amount of funds, and we don't have a finite oh, pot, so uh, an, in, an infinite pot. So, is there, if you had suggestion at this point for me, would you say seven, six, and three are the most important? Is that what you, what you just said, or did I mark the wrong one? So I'd say I prioritize, or my, my recommendation is three, six, and seven, based on dispersing the funds um, across the county and not just doing district one, because project areas one, two, and three have the highest average <laughs> annual daily traffic. So I, I know. Based on that comment there, I'd say we just go in for the whole Don't thing. Don't do anything in District One. <laughs> oh, got, he's got all the. I'm gonna pass the gavel and make that motion. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, technically, project areas one, two, and three have the highest average. I thought we, I thought we were heading in the right direction. Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Rodriguez is backtracking on me this afternoon. Just Mr. Rodriguez, do we or do we not need to go ahead and fund this whole project this year, sir? No. 114. See, that hasn't even spent all the money that we've got budgeted. If we just went with that. Yeah, if we if we went with those three, it'd be within budget. So I well within budget. I don't mind uh, this commissioner, and I'm only speaking yeah. for myself, this commissioner doesn't mind adding a little in there to try to get us on down the road here. So the worst, the worst areas that, what would be your next work? I'm assuming you're a, that you're aware of each one of these locations and what have you. Yes. So other than three, six, and seven, what would be your next what would be your next uh, most critical issue in, on this list? be on County Road 309, so either project areas one or two. And there's a lot of traffic on those roads. Um, that, that's why I would pick that. But if you if you base it off of you know the amount of damage. Would that be one or two or? Mm -hmm. so on this list that we got here, you said you already gave me a three, six, and seven. Which one on the? Do you not have a copy of this list I got? I do. I was looking at the pictures just to refresh my memory. It was it was a couple months ago when I visited all those sites and took all the pictures. Um, I would I would say one so over one over two. So. If you were to pick four, I would say one, three, six, and seven. And that would get us a little bit. Can you add them up for me? Bean counter. It's about one hundred and fifty thousand plus or minus. I'd kind of like to know exactly. <clears throat> 81 plus 33 is 114 plus was it 33 is one, you're right at 150. What? You're right at 150. Okay. So if we, so if we have, what? You're under budget. So we give them 160 not to exceed because we know something has gone up, huh? We got 150, don't we? We have 130. 130. At 133. So if we give them 160 not to exceed. Then, um, for the direction of, of project areas one, three, six, one, and seven. Three, six, and seven. Okay. One, three, six, and seven. Okay. So moved. Got a motion. We're going to proper motion to go to not exceed 160 for one, three, six, and seven. Second. Got a second by Commissioner Harvey. Quick deliberation. Commissioner Harvey. I'll be very brief. Mr. Rodriguez, please, in the future, just bring us maybe inside the budget and because now we've opened a can of worms and you're right if somebody watched this and fell off one of these i mean you know our budget and 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 put them in rank order where they need to be thank you okay commissioner rawls no I, <clears throat> we we've known for a long time that we're we're behind in yard rail replacement we just need a budget for it get a plan keep fixing them okay commissioner adams act 
Oh, it was. Okay. All right, we've got a proper motion, proper second. All in favor, just saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Okay, four to one with Commissioner Adams Act to Senate. Okay, item A, public works. Um, just didn't feel like I read Recommendation award budget discussion for um, septic, the sewer, the sewer to septic uh, phase three. Uh, Mike? Yes, Chairman, we would like to present for recommendation to award and discussion uh, bid award 22-23 Horse Landing Road and LC Drive septic to sewer project, phase three. Uh, this phase will add 30 additional customers onto the system. We do require an additional 111,000 uh, from the county. Uh, there's $450,000 provided by St. John River Management District. This will sum up to a project total of $561,000. Uh, this equates to roughly $3,724 per connection uh, uh, that of cost to the county. Um, currently, there's no water provided at this location, but it is planned in the ARPA-funded water expansion. Um, the sewer fees are at the present $50 per month uh, flat rate, which that sums up to roughly $600 per year. Uh, by our math, it would take roughly 6.2 years of uh, revenue under the current billing to uh, get back that $3,724 that the county put into it. Uh, rates would be changed, however, to a consumption basis after the water lines are installed for these residents in that location for those that opt for it. Um, this, uh, in this location, uh, there are trunk lines ran. So again, these are just individual connections into those existing trunk lines. Okay, um, start with Commissioner Rawls. I'm blown away by the cost at twenty thousand dollars, almost you know, per per house to connect because um, in, in the real world it's not that. But who owns the pumps? Who owns the maintenance? Again, these are the E1 pumps that we've used in the past. We we own who, who owns the maintenance in, on, in the future? We do. So we're going on private property, put a private pump on, on putting our pump on private property, and then the tax holder is stuck with a bill in the future, not if but when these things fail. Well, we will get an easement to do the work and to be able to maintain uh, the assets that we place on the property. What I'm saying is it puts the burden on, on the taxpayers. I, I, I can't vote for this until we get to a point where we um, make, make the, at least the maintenance responsibility the, the, on the back of the owners. Otherwise, you give everybody 20 grand, let them go put a brand new um, septic, uh, aerobic septic system in at that point. But um, this isn't a good value. We're, we're stuck with a bill in the future. Commissioner Turner. Okay, well, the way I see it, we got two options. We can either give them water management back $450,000, and the reason this has gone up from when it was then to now is because it was bid last year or the projections were done last year and everything's gone up from last year. I mean, we've said that multiple times from both ends of this die. So, uh, you know, I think we do need to move forward because we're not going to grow this system out of out of this without growing it. I mean, we're just not. So, you know, to make this system sustainable, we've got to continue doing it. Well, we've got a chunk of 450,000 towards that goal from water management. Yes, it's going to cost us another 111. Do I like it? No, I certainly don't. But by the same token, I believe if we don't keep that that system moving in the proper direction that we're never, ever going to be able to make it where it's self-sustainable, which is, I think is the goal, where nobody has to go in and support the system. Uh, nobody else in the, that's not on the system has to support the system. So uh, I think we need to move forward as much as, I don't like it either, but I think we need to, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Adams, I, I think we all know I'll be voting no on this. Um, <clears throat> for many reasons, but the main thing is I, I don't see us ever growing the sewer system to where it's sustainable and affordable, where it covers its own costs. The only way we're gonna do that is by growing the water system. The water system is where it's at as far as making it where we actually bring in revenue and break even point. It can't be done with the sewer system without expanding our sewer plant, I don't believe, without buying more property at the sewer plant. And then you're talking about twenty, thirty million dollars on the back side of that. I think I think um, I think this is unsustainable. I wouldn't put another dime into our sewer system unless we're absolutely necessary or unless if it's benefiting some commercial activity specifically that drives higher tax 
basis and other things in areas that are less developed, and, and that's just my opinion. You're advocating giving back the full 50? I don't think we should put another dime into our sewer system unless it really... Yeah, I, I'm against this altogether. All right, Thank you. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to vote for this, but I, I do want to say I always had concerns when we put these pumps on private property, but, you know, we, we're reducing the nitrogen level in the water bodies, the St. John's River. It's a win-win situation, and we do have to grow our system up. We'll have to address the pumps later on down the road. I know that, but right now we need to move this forward, so I'm, gonna, I'm ready to move forward. Okay. Commissioner Rawls? Sure, Mike, is there any, has there ever been or is there going to be any consideration going to gravity and just getting away from these pumps? That, that was initially considered. Now, what you have to understand about the nature of this funding is it's competitive based, okay? So gravity system in a very flat area with a high water table becomes very expensive very quickly. Not to mention the ground, the, the soil there is extremely unstable. I, I don't know how deep we'd have to go if you had to, you know, obviously you have to put a lot of structures in. They have to be on solid dirt and you'd have to have sufficient fall. You don't have any of those characteristics down there in this area. So when we put all this together, uh, it had to be based off of this low pressure system because it's cost effective for those types of conditions. And we were able to have low enough numbers to where it could be competitive against the other counties. Uh, the way this funding works is they have a, a, um, a cost per pound of nutrient reduction in terms of nitrogen and phosphorus. And if your construction costs come over a certain number per pound, you won't get this money. So that's why we moved with this system in lieu of gravity. Oh, I'm with you, I like the gonna... gravity, but, it's, but as far as a cost-effective approach, it's not, it, we wouldn't be able to get the funding. So if, if you were taking a look at an area like off 207, proximal to 17, um, to put that, now you're much higher topographically. You don't have the water table that you would have down there. Uh, are, are we at least looking at the possibility? Yes, all, absolutely. Since I've those. been elected, all I've heard is, and, and I, if I had been sitting on this dais when they discussed um, a, a force main system, I would have said, no, don't do it. Let's just go straight gravity and start from that. But uh, I, it's, it's so hard for me to wrap my head around that we're going to spend almost $600,000 to connect 20 homes, that, or 30 homes. That just doesn't make dollars and cents to me. So, But I... I'd, Hopefully, hopefully we'll go to gravity one day and, and that, that pain. In the areas where we have the ability to, we will definitely move in that direction. However, down there, uh, the, the conditions are just not favorable for it. And uh, even with the, the lift station where we converted, uh, converted Paradise Point uh, sewer plant mm -hmm. to a lift station, I think they had to go down nearly 20 feet before they hit solid ground. So it's um, it's not a big deal though. Just dewater and, and put it. In. It is, but if you have to put structures, you know, ever so often for your gravity-fed system, and you're having to dewater and I, it, I did. I, I, it gets I could take you out there off of Highway 20. We were in we were in mud three feet deep. Um, it we dewatered. Yeah. Okay. All right, Commissioner Adams. Act. The simple math puts the sustainability of the sewer system as our plant at like 73 percent capacity. Once you hit about 50% capacity, we have to look into expanding it because the two tank system doesn't allow for maintenance and other things. <clears throat> if we have a failure, we need to do anything to shut down the side, especially since we have a pressurized system from all these little pumps, which doesn't allow us to shut it off at a main lift station in any way or divert stuff. So it isn't sustainable. It's not actually possible, in my opinion, to get it to where it's break even. It's unless if we completely expand the system, which would require more property, another 100 acres somewhere to build more of the ponds to have the stuff leach, and it's, it just isn't, it isn't there. I, I did a tour of the thing. I talked through it. I met with water management. I went over my, my concerns as far as this goes, and we can't get there with the sewer plant that we have today. It isn't possible. So to keep expanding on it, not strategically for specific initiatives that maybe meet a demand that would bring in more tax base makes absolutely no sense beyond the fact that the sewer system we have only services a small part of our community and we probably have valid septic systems there that may be just as effective as our sewer system. So you can't get there with sewer. You can get there with sewer and water if we stop adding to sewer and we expand water. Um, it will never get to where it's sustainable. The numbers don't make sense. It doesn't add up. And that's without taking into account maintenance or anything else that we have to do with the plant. Commissioner Turner. Well, 
Well, I've also taken a look at this, and I disagree with his assessment. Um, I don't think that we ought to keep half a plant just for redundancy over the plant. I think we need to have a capacity at about 75 to 80 percent is what we need to do. And I've talked to him about it too, but I totally disagree. Do you have two trucks at home in case one breaks down? Well, that, well okay, well, <laughs> most people don't. So I don't think we should build a $18 million plan or whatever that thing costs and hold $9 million of it in reserves. I think we need to sell capacity at whatever capacity everybody else in the world sells at that's on a utility system. Yeah, if we try to build double systems and, and double redundancy on everything that we do, you're right, we'll never come out of it. But if we go on and sell to the capacity that we need, then we will. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm as upset as anybody else on this on this that it costs extra money. But when we come in and, and we use numbers from a year ago or two years ago when this grant process started, it's no surprise that it comes in higher than what the grant was a year or two ago. I mean, just look at the world right now. Go buy a hamburger at the store, whatever it is. It's more money. So I think we should take the water management's 450000 and I think it's worth the 111 we got to put in to get the 450 to try to move it some more in a sustainable direction. So I move that we move this forward. Second. A proper motion by Commissioner Turner, proper second by Commissioner um, Harvey. Commissioner Adams, do you have another comment? I'm just going to say 18700 some dollars per house to do this, and it's not sustainable. It's a... And it's, the reason it's not sustainable is because of the type of system we're doing where it's always pressurized. We have no means to shut it down. We have no means. We will never be able to do the proper maintenance once we go over 50%. You will not be able to take down half of the plant if you needed to do something. If one of those actuators broke, if anything happened where we actually had to do work on it, it can't happen once you get over 50% because of the way the system's designed without lift stations that allow you to isolate where stuff is temporarily till they fill. It actually isn't possible, but I, you can disagree with me all you want. That's that's the facts. As I've talked to several experts on it, and with what we have, with the way we're doing, with the individual lift stations at each house. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Turner. Experts are like lawyers. We could line the room on both sides with yours, and then the other <coughs> side with mine. So I'm just telling you, because the people I've talked to say sell it to 78, 75 to 80 percent and move forward with it. And it may cost 18000 some odd per household, but it ain't costing us that amount of money. It's all taxpayer money. Okay, whatever. Water management's paying for the 450000 of it. It's not coming out of our general fund. Does that suit you better? No. Okay, whatever. I don't really care. Okay, we've got, uh, so got a proper motion, a proper second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing that, all in favor, can say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Aye. Okay. Three to two with Commissioner Rawls and Adams Act dissenting. Okay, that's all of the items. We'll move down to um, County Administrator. Mr. Chairman, I am talked out today, sir. I bet. Okay, move down to um, public comments on miscellaneous items. Anybody wish to make public comment on miscellaneous items? Miscellaneous items. Okay, Douglas. Name's Douglas Hayes, 216 Huron Avenue, Satsuma. Uh, I have to soiree into a new subject because you're talking about this uh, sewer and water. It's one of the most ignorant designs I've ever heard, seen. You're drying out the poo-poo, collecting the water, and then toting the dry matter to the landfill. No efficiency. Second thing is, Mr. Harvey had addressed the idea about nitrates. There happens to be a, an attachment you can put on existing septic tanks called a nitrate eater. Or you could legislate any new development to have the septic tank um, have the nitrate eater to eliminate the nitrates that are possibly going into water areas. Your problem with the algae blooms is not nitrates. It's phosphates. It's that same person that lives along the water that can afford to fertilize their grass. It leaches off when it rains. 
So you're wasting your money and you're causing the individual to lose their sovereignty. $50 a month to flush their toilet, not counting the electric bill for the kickdown pump. Now, the reason I really came here was to address a concern with animal services and your new shelter and the idea with the uh, prisoners are going to go and train the dogs. Well, it turns out that the um, state prison has a dog program. The dogs are in the cell with the prisoner. It's a fast tracking obedience training to give them a skill level to make them adoptable versus the prisoners going over to a facility to be one-on-one. -on -one. So I would suggest that maybe we put some funding towards that program. But there is a caveat to it. They've had to uh, put down, aka shoot, three dogs already. Two were trained to attack the guards. One was trained to attack people of color because the prisoner was a white supremacist. And there's rumor of dog fighting taking place. So there's your dog program with prisoners. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Douglas. Any other further public public comment? Okay, seeing none. Commissioner comments. Commissioner Adams Act. Commissioner Turner. I'm good. Commissioner Rawls. Okay. I'm good. Commissioner Harvey. I'm good. Okay, I'm good. Long meeting, guys. Thank you. Thank you for staff and everything. Uh, we stand adjourned. <laughs>